I blew the motor up first round, and I was like, this know. can be two, three years before I can afford a motor. Drifting brings overall happiness yeah. to me. I get very moody if I can't drive. Having to make ends meet to go have fun takes a lot of the fun out of it. V1 Mega Mantis kit. I have not broken a tie rod, a heim, nothing. I took one set of Kendas. They lasted all day. I was doing backy after backy. I studied drone footage. My banger clip is going to be backwards before the top of the crest. Do you rely on your content for sponsorships and stuff like that? I feel as if it's a big factor. People are like, what's it like riding a drift car? It's a roller coaster that you cannot predict. Especially as a passenger. Yeah, if you do something good enough for long enough, it's bound to succeed. Exactly. Hate that if you want. It's a fucking show. It the is. car's supposed to look good at an event like that. That's frustrating sitting there watching somebody back up a trailer. Go Sorry if you man can't back up a trailer. <laughs> a lot of drivers that are looking to make a living in the sport, they already have that general understanding of, I've got to get over myself. I'm going to have yeah. to be on camera. Yeah. They said that I couldn't do it, so I wouldn't do it. Welcome back to the number one drift podcast on YouTube. I am Dawson and we have back today Todd Cooper. How y'all doing? Yeah, if you don't know who he is, he is like the book talk of the car industry or, you know, whatever, something like that. How the Cougars doing, man? They're, they're fantastic. Your fleet. You know, <laughs> my, my, my fleet, you know, I go to the, I travel with them every, every once in a while. I'll go hang out with them. I'll go to nursing homes. I'll go hang, bring, check on their AARP cards. I don't know. That doesn't make any fucking sense, Todd. All right. I'm sorry. I had to give you a little bit of <laughs> right, shit. You'd be turning me, fucking, turning me red and shit by all these women. All right. What a start. Right? Okay. Hey, oh, I thought we were here about talking about drifting. <laughs> Anyways. So, uh, all right. So, how you been since last time? Man, I've been fantastic. I've been so good. Um, it's been almost a year since I've been here. and. I feel as if I've, I've, I've grown myself and like things I've been doing in the past year, I can look back on and be happy about. I can smile about, I got a lot going on with a lot new, a lot of new people this year. And, um, I had to take a big step up with what I call my program now. Yeah. Like I, I mean, it's not a large scale program, but I have a program yeah, more now. Yeah, like I'm more in depth. Like that shit's up my knees now. Like I need to put bare goddamn rubber boots on. Like shit's getting <laughs> thick. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I local Patriot Coffee, local Patriot Roasting Company. They came on this year, and Kate, like, she helped me. That came from a simple me reaching out to them, being from my hometown in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, hey, like, y'all are from my hometown. We should collaborate on something, maybe make like a, a slight video. Like I just was reaching out because I was interested in doing content. And she yeah. came back, was like, absolutely, and was stoked about it. And like, Kate, she's a female, of course. She. <laughs> back to it. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, like she held me accountable for a lot of things. Like she made me step up a lot. Um, how so? In basically in delivering. So I she kind of she saw my she knows she can see my talent. She sees my passion. She could see my drive. And I'll thank her for the rest of my life for this, for pushing me mm -hmm. out of my comfort zone. She held me accountable. I blew the motor up first round of Catch My Drift this year in Atlanta. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, I'm out. Like yeah, I, I'm. Like, am it, I gonna do this? Can be two, three years before I can afford a motor. Yeah, I was on the way home, just to help between my legs, just hurt, and she wouldn't let me down. Like she, she would not. She's like, all right, so when's the next round? I'm like, a, a month. What do you? Why? She's like, well, we need to get this going. We like, I'm. Yeah, we have, we have, we're in, we're in a contract. You got to deliver. Like, Dang, okay. So then, like that rolls over into all the other people I work with. Like as soon as that happened, the like mm -hmm. I've never been supported by more people than I was right after I blew my motor. Yeah. Everybody that's on the car, like Power Stroke Performance, Dapper Street, Local Patriot. Okay, it, well, ho hold on. So let's let's back up a little bit. Pump the brakes. Yeah, yeah, Okay. Yeah. I'm how just did, reading. How did the motor blow? Exactly. The crazy. Do you know? So or? I feel as if it was the uh, connecting rod bolts. Okay. They were the factory bolts. They weren't Ooh, ARP. Yeah, they weren't up yeah. uploading. That thing... They built that motor in 2015, and it saw rev limiter before me. 2015? Uh, yes. An LS60 aluminum Dude, block. Dude, it's paid. It's due. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm mean? not like, 
to me, I'm like, <laughs> that motor owed, like, uh, no, it didn't owe anyone anything. Yeah. So. So it, the pain, the hurt from it wasn't necessarily a, it wasn't the car a, was broke. It was just like, man. Yeah. Like, I was in first gear. It's going to be like, a minute. <laughs> kind of doing tight stuff to warm my front tires up. And I went to kick it around and spun it real high. And the revs about, well, I, 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 I watch this video all the time. And do you have it? I do have it. Like so I was on GoPro. Th- so they yeah. So it, it, just, it, just, it was just like poof, a big flash of fire. Cause obviously all the oil went out and coated the heathers, the mm. uh, heathers, the <laughs> headers. And it just, in, everything went up into a flash. And my, I just panicked. Like mm. you just go straight into, like I sit in the garage sometimes at home and I'm like, what if this thing catches on fire? What would I be doing? What do I need to do? And so like I would, at, as soon as that thing lit off, I knew to wham man. Get everything turned off and yeah. get out. Like that was a my. You ever practice I, it? Yeah, yeah. I practiced it in That's my garage because it is so scary. You may, it may sound stupid, it, and you may feel dumb as fuck doing it, but it's smart. Yeah, like if how fast can you kill everything? Yeah, I'm like not. Don't even like. You don't even have to jump out of the car and like try and escape the car in your garage. Just get down the. Like you could do. I could kill my whole car without even with my eyes. Yeah, blindfold me, bro. Yeah, I can shift handbrake, steering wheel. I know where everything's at. So that like immediately flash, oh fuck. I don't, the last thing I want, if it's a fuel rail, everything get in here, I need to kill everything and get the fuck out. Oh, yeah. So wham, and you're you're releasing your harnesses and you're out. Yeah. Like get like I I hurt my shoulder. My heart my shoulder hurt for like probably two or three months after I yeeted myself out of that car. So I was so scared. I like I saw a flash, killed everything, and hell, I ran fifty yards from the car. My first instinct wasn't even the fire extinguisher next to me. It was like get the fuck away from yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I was scared to death. Anxiety's like my I like I saw red, and I was like, oh god, get away as fast as you mm-hmm. can before it gets in the cabin. Because I'm gonna tell you one thing right now, my firewall's not the most sealed thing. That thing's got some, it's got some monstrous holes in it to come. Yeah, yeah. like it needs to be sealed better. But you know, like I run that risk. I get it. Mm. but back to the motor the connecting rod yeah we were on track once <laughs> <laughs> it's fine the connecting rod bolt it was just oem bolt and it broke number one piston and it just took everything out with it Ooh. yeah so it was like <laughs> I, I i haven't even torn the heads off cam smoked push rods are smoked like everything's smoked on the inside yeah so like i don't know if the heads are i imagine it would be if like i don't know if the valve hit anything or mm. piston came back up so i'm just going to consider that a nice little paperweight for the garage yeah we make a nice, uh, little table out of it or yeah, yeah yeah we can lay it over on the side and see that's that window right there yeah <laughs> oh so yeah there's that's, my peak hole my yeah peep hole, whatever it's, the fuck it's called breathe a little bit more yeah yeah, oh, yeah you could see all the way through it yeah it's aerodynamics bro what are you talking yeah, about yeah the, the funny thing was like i like like I said, I ran 50 yards from the car. And I looked back and I'm like, oh, shit, that some bitch ain't on fire. And I ran back over and I got the, <laughs> I, I got the fire extinguisher out. And uh, at that point in time, I have, okay, I got to give a shout out to somebody on the Catch My Drift crew. Because my GoPro was running the entire time. I ripped my helmet off, put on top of the car. And I see a dude come from across Lanier Raceway. He hurtled. Probably three of Lanier's massive. Remember this. Huge. We talked about this in David's podcast. It's massive. Huge. Like the whole time this GoPro is video and this guy comes from looking like an ant to all the way to my car and halfway through this wind sprint over the barriers of the track, he picks up a 50 pound fire extinguisher. This dude looked like an NFL player. Like (laughs) looking back (laughs) at this GoPro footage, whoever this guy was, I commend you for like, you're you're coming to the rescue even when you're 500 yard dash away. Yeah. So, but yeah, I get there and like, I, I'm like, all right, I know not to pop the hood. So like, if you, if you ever suspect a fire, if you see black smoke, most of the time, like soot, that means fire. There's fire somewhere. Yeah. So explain, like, why would you not open the hood? If, if you suspect a fire underneath the hood, if you were to pull those hood pins and snap that hood open, it's just going to suck a bunch of air. Yeah. Exactly. It's just going to add oxygen yeah. to the fire. You yeah. ever open the door really fast and you get smacked in the face with wind? That Same fucking thing. Same concept. That's just going or the straight oven. to the heat. The oven's the a, oven. a better example. As soon as you open the oven and you get smacked with fucking heat. Yeah. Just imagine that being flames instead. <laughs> so you want to do it. Like if you have a vent, peek through your vent. Like you want to be able to get to this fire within five seconds if it's on fire. So get there, see what it is. If you have to crack 
like crack the hood and get a fire extinguisher in there. That's your, probably your best bet. Don't just whoosh. Cause then when you do that, you're just going to, all that yeah. fire is going to come out with spread it. Everywhere. Yeah. And then that doesn't do anything good for the situation. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. If you can spray it through the vent hood or through the, a crack in the hood or through a, a wheel well. Yeah. Something. So it never fully caught on fire. It will. It never fully caught on fire. Luckily. Cause I think I killed everything in time. So. Yeah. I don't think it could have spread any more than it did because it was just oil. Yeah. So the oil hit the headers. The headers are hot. It just, a big flash fire. Big, I've seen that so many times with LS. It, looking back though, it wasn't like, if I give this clip to him, it's not, y'all aren't going to be like, damn, that's wild. You're going to be like, wow, that's it. But in the moment, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, looking, like, looking back at it now, like in the moment, like you just see a flash come up out of the hood, but in the moment, you're like, that flash is going to lead to another flash and then out of nowhere, like I, I refer back to Colette Davis's her fire video at VIR. It just is it went pssst, and you see a fire and then out of nowhere the entire cabin of her Corvette was engulfed. Mm -hmm. That was burnt into my memory as a nightmare, dude. I was like, I yeah. hope and pray to God that never fire, that never happens to me. So I was sitting there and I saw the flash come out of the hood from right at my feet, and I'm like in my intuition I'm like fuck. I hope it doesn't melt through a fuel rail. If it melts through a fuel rail or a fuel line, yep. So I was like fuel pump and power off immediately the seat belts rip those off don't even worry about the steering wheel get out like because mm -hmm. that watching her do that and she she went over like great fire safety yeah. she went through that entire video i watched like she was it was a i'm i can't Dude, she made that a tearjerker <laughs> the way she edited it bro i was yeah. like oh my god i feel like, like you just lost a child or some shit that was such a like sad story like she made it like she did I hate to see it, but like she painted she helped me. Like her Oh yeah. Her her going through that is a is yeah. a terrible thing, but like that's me why that watching video her did content. So well. Yeah, and like she she educated so many people, mm -hmm. including me. I mean it helped me in my situation. I highly contemplated a fire suppression system after that. But I was like, wait, grassroots yeah. that's that's a little overkill for grassroots, maybe, but they're See, I used to think the same thing, but nowadays they're so affordable. Like I used to be like, man, I can't put like how much are they now? I think four hundred dollars, and you can get a fire fire suppression okay, system. Yeah, see, that's really yeah, not it's a stretch. It's not too bad, but it's not a thousand dollars. Yeah, and to protect <laughs> yeah. like a large investment, like what we have into these vehicles, like if I have an extra four hundred dollars one day, I'm gonna buy a fire suppression system in case it's just that bad. Yeah, like I watched the uh, Drift Week one. When Rudy Hansen's car, just in like oh, his fiberglass, dude. all fiberglass yeah. C five, dude, that that the, was gnarly. That car meant so much to him. Like that was like the tie. I can't exactly quote what it was, but the ties to his family with that car, and it was like a family yeah. heirloom. And then like it just, he had to sit there and watch it melt down because it just, just the, it was. A bad and then situation. physically had to buy another car. Yeah. off of Luke just to make it home. Yeah, they 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 were they were in the middle of the desert when this. Do happened. you imagine that? No. Giving up your dream, like your baby, your family heirloom, like yeah, that for VQ. God, we were talking tears until VQ. you added a VQ in it. It was a good VQ. <laughs> yeah, Don't was. Get me wrong. was but it, it always the four door sedan. VQ <laughs> was Luke's yeah. four door. Mm -hmm. That yeah, I remember now. Yeah, yeah, because they had to take it. They all rode in it the rest of Drift Week. Luke went home. I think, and then mm -hmm. he drove it back to Utah. Yeah, they still have. Well, car? they had the uh, Escalade at that time. Yeah, I think that's Dan's think old at the time. Dan Savage old uh, Escalade was it? Yeah, that is right. Yeah, Dan up in uh, Northern Virginia. Yeah, yeah, he's got a pretty nice F two fifty now or three fifty, whatever the fuck it is. Oh yeah, yeah. So okay, back like back to the motor. Back motor blown up. Yeah. So yeah. Um. What? All right. After the fact. After the fact. I'm thinking I'm what done. What did you do? I'm thinking I'm done. I'm on the way home, like tail between my legs. And then everyone that supported me was like, I got this. I got that. I got this. What you need, let me know. Mm -hmm. We're going to get this rolling. We're going to get this right. And I, like, my passion for this is so high that I was, like, heartbroken when this happened. And for the people that I'm, I'll be forever indebted to these people. Because they help me continue my passion and continue what I love. Like, this brings overall happiness to my life. Drifting brings overall happiness yeah. to me. Like, I, I get very moody. Like, 
very moody if i can't drive like it it, it it's a dopamine thing i need like yeah, I, it's just yeah. something i need it's my therapy but these guys like and girl and kate girls like they stepped up and would not let me fall into that rut like would not let me stop like i got this you need a motor cool like we're gonna find this you find this you send me send me what you need for the motor you send me how much it is you send me pictures like yeah and they're like got you got you got you got you what do you need we're okay so cool we're gonna yeah we're, we'll work a day out and you come up here and we'll do this and i don't they helped me out tremendously and they're why the rest of the year happened mm. so Hell yeah. yeah so how it, it was how long did it end up taking you it or did you push it to the wire of that month i made every catch my drift round but the last one so i had i think after Atlanta, there was like a two month break and I might've missed one more. I can't remember, but it was only like a month or two. Uh -huh. I, I'd got, I had gotten home and within a week I found a motor local to Virginia beach. Nice. Yeah. And there was only a few things I needed to change. I needed to change like the oil pan. Cause I went from a six O to a five, seven, like LS two to LS one. Yeah. So I needed a new oil pan. Um, what else did I need? There was a few things. I can't like everything else. Basically, I wanted to get a plug and play option. I wanted to go from yeah, my 6.0 yeah. to a 5.7 that I could just drop in. Mm -hmm. The Holly's going to plug up. Everything's just going to be good. And I found one local to Virginia Beach. I sent it to all my people. And they're like, let's get it. I'm about it. Run that go motherfucker. Get it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like. It's right down the street. Like I can go get it. So I called the guy and went and looked at the motor and it was a, it's a five, seven and it's a uh, factory crank, but everything else in the rotating assembly is mm. forged. So it has AFR heads on it, a good set of heads because nice. on a naturally aspirated motor, it's got a flow air flow yeah. and air on a naturally aspirated motor is key. So it's got a good set of heads on it, a nice intake and it's, it's 420 horsepower reliably. That's all I need. Like you yeah. don't, it, it's, you don't need some gangster setup. Like, 400 horsepower keeps it budgetable. Oh, yeah. You're still balling it's on a budget. still manageable like, to keep up with people it, and everything as well. I mean, there's been... At a pro-am level. Yeah. 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 Like, I, you could... I have what is, like, the best overall platform of a car, I feel like, to go to party events, to go to competition drifting, to just really do anything, because... Yeah, anywhere from Drift Week to pro-am. Yeah, exactly. Because I can get in that thing, because it's not wild. It runs 93... It's 400 horse. I can get six gear on highway yeah. and just cruise and be fine. Like, it's not that wild, realistically. It's a, it's, when you look at the cars of now, like these 750 horsepower cars that they like daily drive around. Overkill, dude. Uh, dude, my car's so that. much less than that, but it, it, it keeps it reliable. I'm, <laughs> The fun factor is higher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I'm sorry, way more suckers. Fun. Yeah. So. That's that really I wanted a motor that was a plug and play deal that got me right back on track because like I said, Kate was pushing me. She was like, You need to get on track. If yeah. you don't go to this next round, Todd, like you don't you you're in breach of our contract. <laughs> not pay, we're not paying. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We're not paying you if you don't go to this round, Todd. So you need to find a motor, you need to get it figured out, and you need to get it running. So that was a stressful year. But it was yeah, to me a year of growth. Yeah. So yeah. It pushed me to the whole nother level. Hell for yeah. For real. And it's what? like to touch on the last time I was here, which I get hell about because um, y'all titled it or you titled it um, working on his drift car himself and like entirely like builds. He's built all his cars himself. My buddy Sean rode me. He's like, dude, you don't even build cars, and, which I don't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm completely, I got to touch on it. So they'll quit riding my back, bro. They be on that, bro. They. <laughs> He was like, you don't even build the cars. I'm like, I know I don't. I was like, because I, like, I buy something already built and manage it. Yeah. Like, I, I maintain it. Like, mm -hmm. I replace parts. I can't weld. I can't put a cage in a car. Like, I can, <laughs> I'm a mechanic. <laughs> to me, that's building, though. You're, you're piecing it I'm all together, it. whether it's, you yeah, know, I, get I a, can understand like the I, building stuff. I but. appreciate a finished product that is tried and true, going to work. Yeah. You know it works? Cool. I'll buy that. If yeah. it's tried and true every time, I'm a, I like just that car. I watched my buddy Chase beat the hell out of that car for yeah. like four years. And I told myself, like, I'm going to buy that car one day. Lo and hold, I did. And, but because it was tried and true, like mm -hmm. it, it, it worked. 
and it to that's me that's why i bought the rb instead yeah of, because i was contemplating between an rb and a 1j setup that was on facebook marketplace but i'd seen the rb get literally beat and just take yeah. it every single time and then the 1j i had never even seen in a car people wonder why like the like oh i can't i gotta have these problems and this problem and like well you're you're like too high yeah just dial it back a little bit just dial it back a little bit and I, I guarantee you the fun's gonna come way more you're gonna have way more fun doing what the car wants to do than like unless you're just a dude that just enjoys wrenching on a car at a racetrack if my shit's yeah. going on four jack stands dude i'm going to the house Absolutely, I, oh, I carry jack stands with me. I carry jacks. Like, if it's something like, all right, cool, like, I can get up underneath there and change it real quick. But yeah. if it's got to go on four jack stands, I'm not dropping a transmission. I'm not dropping a differential. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Dude, there's people. Why, though? It's so easy. Oh, bro, that's in the, it's on a, it's most of the time it's in the rocks or Dude, ca- asphalt. We, I've, we've dropped an LS, me, well, I'm saying Scott's, Scott's car. We dropped his LS Trans, which was just a, I think it's a, it was a T56. Or T, maybe it's a TR66. I Either way. It's Either like, way. Yeah. yeah. We, we had it out and back in within like a couple hours, but we also had to go buy the slave. So like yeah. we were sitting there for 20, 30 minutes waiting on the part to come back. Yeah. The LS Trans is so easy to take out. It is. Like, I, I totally agree with you. Like at my house. With everything I know where it's at, everything I need, I can have my transmission. Oh yeah, hour. you got but it all like, organized. If I'm at the if I'm at the event and I got to pull it like a transmission out, I got to take the drive shaft out, drain the fluid, and I got to do this, and then hell, I got to figure out what's wrong with it. Hell, I got to go to O'Reilly's get a slave cylinder. That's another hour, and then get back, and it's gonna be two more hours before I get the summits back together. And then hell, if I'm gonna get why yeah. waste like why I don't I I can find. Something I'll push that car on a trailer and yeah. I'll hang out for the rest of the day and have. Fun. Oh, I would never do it just to get back out that same day. Screw that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like if I if I come out and it's like nine ten o'clock, track just goes hot. I go out and I blow up a transmission, and I like granted. Okay, let's say something you can replace. I go out. It's ten eleven o'clock in the morning. We got eight hours of drifting left in the day. A diff. A diff. Let's go with okay. A diff. Um, if I have to source it, I'm not replacing it. If I have a diff in the in the truck. And it's ready to go. Yeah. Sealed ready to go. I'll yeah. replace it. Yeah. I'll replace that. I, it's ready to go. The farthest I'll go is walking around the pits and searching Facebook Marketplace. Yes. But I'm putting that motherfucker to like 10, 15 mile radius. And if the. <laughs> and if, I ain't if going the, far. I'm not driving 45 minutes to a parts store. Yeah. Like, no. like to go get an alternator. Like to drive an hour to the parts store, drive an hour back. That's two hours. Like, granted, it only takes 10 minutes to put an alternator on LS, but it's just for an example. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't not see worth it. it. Yeah, just because you it's can just like, not, dude. I don't want to. I love this so much that I don't want to stress myself out about it. Like mm-hmm. competition wise, cool. I'll, I'm I'm gonna do what I have to do to do well. That's part of it. I click that switch on. But a fun a day, like a fun day deal. I'm out there. Like if if something happens to the car, I sh- I demolished opinion. Speaking of a differential, <laughs> I was at uh, Langley, and we were just out there having a fun day, bro. I was just chilling, like. I had overalls on, like, nah. a, like a bucket. <laughs> ah, I saw some of those reels. Yeah, yeah, bro. I was chilling. Like I was out there to have a good time. So, but and I was giving ride-alongs like all day, Miss Jenny. I gave like I owe her a ride-along. I destroyed. No, wait, I did give her a ride-along. And then, um, her sister got in the car, and I owe her a ride-along because I got a first, second, third, fourth row in the gears down through the back stretch of Langley, flick it, and just I. Like, cause in my car, I have to like weight transfer in third. Mm-hmm. It's sketchy. And as I come back towards the wall, grab fourth and just pin it. Like, it's sketchy. What? Yeah. It's cause I don't, it's four on horseback, bro. You gotta have momentum. You gotta be getting around that motherfucker <laughs> to, to like run the wall. So you gotta like flick it gangster. Shifting that close to a wall will and scare the fuck out of as me. As you're coming straight, bro, like as I'm getting ready to flick back, I'm grabbing fourth. And just matting it back to the floor. Dude. And there's a patch that if you get one tire on like the asphalt and one the concrete, that's what I look back on the GoPro. I study this GoPro stuff. Like I hit that patch. And as soon as I hit the patch, shifted and matted it again, sheared the pinion in the diff. Like you hear it. It's like Argh! all the way to a stop. I'm thinking it's the transmission the whole time. So I'm like, oh, again, devastated. Yeah. That's a, that's a, 
that's a hurtful that's that hurts the pocketbook so yep. i'm like another one of those damn i'm done but i wasn't so like it was i quickly figured out it was the diff and i'm like you know what the day's not written off like yeah. we're gonna we're, we're still here i pushed the car on the trailer i hopped into friends cars started taking videos for them like vibing with them like you can oh, make yeah. your, continue to make your day yeah, fun. still have fun yeah like it just because you broke don't don't stress yourself out about it like enjoy yeah. the rest of the process of being at the drift so that it goes back to i agree if you could push it on a trailer and fix it at the house but still have a good day and not stress it fuck that go buy a cheap harbor freight winch put it on your trailer <laughs> I could put it Dude, in the back of my I'm van. telling you, that'll change your life. <laughs> I'll change make a map on the back of my van for a for a down, oh, for a motor hoist. <laughs> Mine's welded to the or not welded, it's bolted to the front frame. Yeah? Yeah, it's like a 70 or no. It's like 8,500 pound winch. It's overkill winch. I didn't need this this much, but it was on sale and it was like 50 bucks more than one that was like yeah, five thousand pound went. I yeah. was like, ah. I'd get this crazy one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, the Harbor Freight sale got me. You're talking about the winches, not a motor hoist. No, a winch, motherfucker. Fuck. I thought you were talking about Dude. putting a damn cherry picker. Well, on that the too. Yeah, buy one of those. <laughs> no, I thought you were I need about one putting a cherry picker on the trailer. No. What? Yeah, bro. That's why I said I'm gonna put a motor. Yo, that'd be back cool though. I ain't gonna lie. But that's a lot though. You ever try to move one of those things around, dude? If anyone out there has Jeez. put a chair, welded a cherry picker onto their trailer, send a picture to me. That's nuts. That's awesome. Like y'all are dev- y'all y'all are dedicated. I'll post you on the Instagram story. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. If you have y'all are dedicated. <laughs> There's some trail guys out in Utah that do Jeep stuff that are like, he has a rescue rig. He's his YouTube channel's huge. I forgot what is it. What it's I can't even. I don't even know his name. Yeah, but. He does that. Like, he's got the whole, he's got winches. And, like, it's a tow mater tow truck with, like, 44s on it. Huge tires. That's gangster, yeah. dude. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. So, I'm like, I I, got, I went a deep dive on that guy's page one time. He goes out there, like, in Moab, he'll tow people out of the trails, like, 30 miles through what normal rock crawlers have to go up. He has to do it towing vehicles. So, it's rad. Like. What a guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's his Damn, page is dude. his page is the shit. Yeah, he does cool I'll stuff. I have to check that out. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah, like he does yeah, like Jeep and Moab recovery stuff. Yeah. It's awesome. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah, a winch. A winch. winch. Yeah. That's smart shit. Get a winch for the trailer. I totally agree with that. I don't have one. There's so many times. Like, oh, dude. You go through the pitch, I'm like, hey, can I wrangle up like 12 dudes to come help me push my broke ass car on the trailer? <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. Yeah, fuck yeah. that. I just want to wrap the chain around it yeah. and yank it up. Yeah. It's like, got a fucking re- a controller that'll reach down to the end of the trailer. You can so steer I'm it up straight, there. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. Just, and realistically, you don't even need a real big gangster one. Like you said, like, mm. Randy, you might spend extra money, got a real nice one. But, but extra money as, dude, it was like $300. Yeah. That's, that, yeah, I could pull a truck that. onto my trailer if I wanted to. Now, see, I don't. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking because my car is the only thing I can fit on my trailer. I can't tow anything yeah. bigger on my trailer, so like I would only need a winch for like three thousand pounds realistically. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I'm like, you can get a simple one, dude. Yeah, yeah. So, dude, whenever I picked that FC up, yeah. Oh, that was a nightmare. Flat tires, it, dude. You're. <laughs> You're probably watching too. I hope you are. This this is a, like it's so fucking funny. Uh, so I show up to this to get this car, and I'm like, I back in, and I'm like, oh fuck, this this is a, a steep driveway going down into where his shop is, which is oh, where so the you're car going is down sitting. the hill into the shop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's sitting. The car is sitting right in front of this, the shop over, like under this awning, <clears throat> and. So, I'm like, this is, this is a steal deal. So, I just literally, like, gave him the money. Didn't ask him any questions. Yeah. And, like, I'm like, just give me the car. And so, we're we're trying to push this thing. Two of the fucking tires are dry rotted so bad that they, would like, absolutely will not hold a PSI of air. Like, a PSI. Yeah. And if if it does, it leaks out within a few seconds. So, it's barely wanting to roll. And surprisingly, these FCs are kind of heavy to push. Any car's heavy to push Dude, when it has flat it tires. Horrible. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> and so we're trying to push it up onto this trailer. Not happening. So I'm like, fuck, how are we going to figure this out? Because like we, we wouldn't even be able to push it up this hill. 
like let alone a on a trailer. trailer. Yeah. So he was like, the fucking dad is like, I mean, we have a come along. I'm like, sweet. Yeah. That'll work. Let's do it. And then so he goes to the garage and he pulls out this thing that's like this big. Yeah. And it's like doesn't reach more than five feet. It's like chain hoist. Yeah, it was like not it, appropriate it not, yeah, whatsoever. It, yeah. it's gonna <laughs> it was very sketchy when <laughs> I was using it. We had to use a ratchet strap on one side and this on the other. And just, dude, we were there for like an yeah, hour and seven. a half. Just keep going, keep going. Oh, my God. It was the biggest nightmare. And after that, the next day, I went and bought a fucking winch. I was like, I never in my life will I do that yeah. again. But I feel like. Those guys that go and like, if you know you're going to go like rescue a car, yeah. or like go get a car that's been sitting a while, I feel like those guys, most of the time, like after that first time of not having everything you need, next time, you're going to have everything you need because you fought that battle. Like you said, with that come along. That's it because I've done it. Like you, you tighten one as much as you can. <sighs> you take a break and then you get the other one and you start doing that. Yeah, <laughs> gonna loosen the other one, and then you just move it back, and you just walk it up on the trailer. Next thing you know, you've Sucks, been. To, it felt like you've been bro. to the gym for three weeks. You walk around like damn Popeye. Yeah, <laughs> and then you're like, you're like, I'm getting fucking lunch. Yeah, if you go into rescue cars and shit, you bring four McDonald's lunch trays, a jack, and a winch. Yeah, and you're good to go. You can yeah. pull any car you want. Exactly. God. I don't know if you watch Vice Grip Garage at all. Like, no, he. Because I learned, I have a little bit, not not much though. His like, he gave me so much more confidence in traveling in the way I do, like traveling like in, on like, so my van, fifteen hundred dollar van, high mileage. It's got it's, yeah. Let's talk about that. Let's yeah. Dude, I will. Wait, let's marry. Okay, so what concert. truck did you have before that? A ninety nine Silverado, four wheel drive. It's lifted. It's shouts got, out to the Silverado. Tw- it's bubble. a twenty or twenty two by fourteen. Some gangster wheels on it. Like <laughs> it's cool. But it's not ideal for towing. Like, it's not ideal for what I wanted to use it for. Like, sleeping in the back seat. Like, I don't know if y'all know how big a Silverado back seat is or not, but it's like about half the width Extended of me. Extended cab one? Yeah. Yeah. T- like, tiny. Tiny. My, my daughter's car seat barely fits in it. But if you can see me <laughs> yes. trying to sprawl in the back of that thing, I'm halfway sleeping in the floor in the seat. It is terrible. So, you know what? I was <laughs> Gotta like, push both seats up to the front all the oh, way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, I was like, man, I'm gonna get me a van. Because my dad's always had, like, the camping thing, and he's done that. And I'm like, because it could be such a versatile thing. So I can, mm-hmm. like, do the daughter, the family thing, and, like, take it and do that. I can also drive my race car around with it. Because yeah. it's, it's an E350 Super Duty gasoline van, though. Like, I can't afford a diesel one. Yeah. No. So it's, 15, like, sucks. I got this thing 1500 bucks from the guy. Uh, he owns the business I work for. Bought it off of him. And had to put a little bit of work into it, which was expected. It was a $1,500 van. Yeah. Like everything's still not perfect, but I got it roadworthy to come here. Mm-hmm. So I took two layers of seats out of it, kept the third row seat in it. So like when I get to places, I can just throw down a bed, and I have everything I need. Yeah. Like I keep a, a cooler in there full of ice water. I keep a loaf of bread. I keep a jar of peanut butter. Like I'll just I'll jam out sandwiches. I made I made. <laughs> dude, we were just talking about this, dude. Peanut butter sandwiches is the best. Well, peanut butter jelly, whatever you yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. It, like, it's the best, bro. Whatever you can get that it's you don't so have convenient. to keep refrigerated. Because, like, if you could just keep that, like, loaf of bread and peanut butter, that shit sticks to you. Like, yeah. that's a damn good snack. Yeah, and think about it. Whenever you were a kid at, at a fucking pool day or something out in the sun, you yeah. did the same thing. As an adult, but in a right. race car, you get that, and then that sandwich fucking smacks, bro. You bro. get that big ass glass of water and a thick ass peanut butter and jelly <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> Boy, you got me over here salivating. No, that's the move, though. Yeah, and it, it hits. fuck standing in concession lines. Fuck leaving to yeah. go to get some food. You can literally just go to your trailer. <laughs> or truck or whatever Lather van. That bad daddy up. Make your little sandwich. Yeah. Eat it real quick. You're back on track, and you don't even have to think about spending more money. And and it makes it's your thick <laughs> your spit dude. gets thicker than biscuit spits. <laughs> Say that again. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I forgot what I uh thicker than biscuit <laughs> piss or some your shit sp- like that. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> your spit gets thicker than biscuit, like. Wow, how is it that I say it? Spit thicker than biscuit spit or something like that. God, I forgot. What like I say, does like that even mean? You know, like when you're when you're like you're eating a. 
<laughs> okay, so like you know how like you're eating a biscuit, right? Like one what? of us is getting roasted in the comments right <laughs> now. I know it. Fried right now. I don't know what this is. <laughs> you maybe a, me. You ever try to eat a Popeyes biscuit without water? I've eat. Okay, I that's the wrong place to choose. I've eaten at Popeyes once, and I've only had their fries. Go to KFC. I, any, I'm okay, just cool. referencing just any like, any real know. any real biff any real biscuit place. KFC, Popeyes, whatever your flavor may be. Get a biscuit. Try and eat that without drinking anything. So thicker than biscuits, bit. Okay, fair. All right, <laughs> so, yeah, that makes sense. So <laughs> now we're caught up. All right, no, so yeah, like my my when I referenced the thicker than biscuits bit wrong, but yeah, my first day of uh, my road trip started out at Dapper Street Barbershop, and this like really didn't even it wasn't choreographed. I really had no plan. I just wanted to get them involved in like I'm starting here and like kind of highlight each stop of my trip, mm -hmm. and. I, I appreciate somebody that can ask good questions. And like AK didn't even know I was going to start hitting him with questions. I, I, I set a tripod, <laughs> I just set a tripod up and I'm like, yeah, yeah, come on in here. We'll just start talking and shooting shit. And, and mm -hmm. I was just like, so what made you want to cut, to start cutting hair? And like, he just rolled into that. And he's like, well, I was like, well, whose hair have you cut that yeah. has been a surprise to you? And he started naming off people that like band members and like MMA fighters and like all these kind of crazy people. Like, but yet I, I appreciate, the like being able to communicate with people and talk to them and like yeah capturing good content like it it takes a creative eye and like a creative kind of mindset towards it yeah. you got to see a, the, a bigger picture than which is ironic because you can ask anyone that i've known growing up like yeah. from a young kid they will always tell you well, i would have never expected something out of this him yeah Cause like, dude, I when I say I'm introverted, I'm fucking introverted. Really? I won't. I'm I'm an observer. I will sit back and observe and not speak until someone speaks to me. I, I totally agree with that. So, yeah, my dad told yeah. me one time. He's like, he's like, sometimes like you need to be the mouth in the room, and then sometimes you need to know when to shut up. Mm -hmm. Like, be a yeah. good listener as much as you are a good talker. Yeah, yeah. That dude. Yes, I got some advice for you then. Whenever I started selling cars, I asked my uh, my uncle because he's been in the car in industry yeah. for a long fucking time. Um, so I was like, "What's like, what's your best advice to anyone trying to sell cars?" And he was like, "You got two ears and one mouth for a reason. Listen twice as many, twice as much as you talk." Yeah, totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah, because like, if you if you listen to people, you can learn people so fast. Yeah, listening to people like I, I, I can go. I used to go as a kid. That's we're going way off, but I used to go to the mall. <laughs> like I was seven years old, go to the mall with my grandfather, and he had a group of friends. They just sit on a bench and watch people. So I was like five, six, seven years old, going to the mall with yeah. like eighty-five year old men watching people. So I like just got that habit of just watching people. So I go to a place and just watch people. Oh yeah, like, I'm a people watcher, bro. People watching's fun, bro. Because yeah. then you're it's, like, dude, at drift events, dude, it's hilarious. Oh yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> hilarious, bro. I, I have seen people do some weird fucking shit at drift events. Yeah, yeah, just by like, themselves, not realizing anyone's looking. Like you, just normal shit you do. Yeah, but it's like, whoa, I I don't think anybody's supposed to see that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what'd you just do behind your truck? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, the the van. Si I want to talk more about the van situation. Yeah. So when it like, I like seeing that a lot more people are adopting that scenario of drifting. So and because I just had Andy May back on, um, which you guys saw that if you're watching this one, but um. He does the whole RV thing with his family, and yeah. like he's like he's in it, in it. Uh, but I like I've always liked the the I guess how do you say that the scaled down version of that of like what Cho's doing. We talked yeah. about this a little bit earlier uh, with the Sprinter van. Yeah, dude, the, those are like perfect, absolutely. absolutely perfect. Yeah, and especially if you got the money to get a one of those decked out ones, Ooh, buddy. Yeah, let or, me tell you, <laughs> like. Like when you get a van, it's kind of like doing the van life. Let me get this just doing the van life. Like you, you got to enjoy the process of the van too. Mm -hmm. So being able to enjoy the process of like 
okay, I got this van and now I need to deck this van out to make it mine and make it cool and yeah. adapt it to like help me out at the racetrack. So like I'm going to put our, a, uh, a rack on top. I'm, I've already got the rack on it and I have to finish the rack to where I could put the rear seat of the van on top and then take the mounts that mount to the chassis that I have left over from the old ones. And you can mount that seat on top of the van. So any drift event you go to, the Dude. top of this van's going to be prime seating. Yeah. So that, to me, like, my daughters can get up there and hang out. Like, Brittany can get up there and hang out. And, like, that's a place for them. Yeah. Like, the van life. I ain't going to lie. I, I, every time I see something like that at, the, at a drift event, I'm like, oh, I'm so jealous right yeah. now. Yeah. Like, I want to be up there. <laughs> yeah, you're on a perch. Like, and then, like, you could throw, my dad gave me an easy up. I'm going to put an easy up off the side of the van with nice. all the walls. It's an additional bedroom. And then, like, you you can adapt. You could take a van and it's just like drifting. Yeah. If you're if you're gonna like if you're gonna grow your car, you can grow your van. And then I'm doing the van to where I can like have it with my family, have it to go to the racetrack, travel in it comfortably, because yeah. you know, I go from Virginia Beach to Arkansas to like be all the drift events. So like a van just makes sense. If you wanna do it and be able to do it and have fun, like adding adding having to make ends meet to go have fun takes a lot of the fun out of it. Yeah. Like when you're like, man, I know I'm going to come back and I'm not going to have that money in the bank account. Yeah. Like if you could scale that back just a little bit, but still make it fun. Absolutely. So like do what you can do to afford to still have fun. Mm -hmm. So perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I love take, the vans. The van takes a hotel out. And of then you get to like, you get to customize and make, make shit so unique. Oh yeah. Dude. I want to build one just to build one, but that's like, that's fun in its own sense. Yeah. yeah. Cuz it's like a, it's it's another personality of you. It's a reflection of your personality. <laughs> like my truck's a reflection a reflection of my personality. My van is, my car is, like mm. everything I try to make my own. And I yeah. feel like a lot of my friends can like attest by that because I I reflect of my car. It's rough. I look rough. It works well. <laughs> I work well. Like it, it's kind of a reflection of my personality. Like it, it, it's got a, I, my car got, <laughs> my, <laughs> my car got a name. So I've never had a name for my drift car ever. I've never named a car either. So I was at Driven Luck Circuit this weekend and, um, I want to say his name's Roy. Roy's a great guy. I really hope his name's Roy. <laughs> all right. Roy was there all day drinking Natty Light, gassing me up. Like, he was like, man, I ain't never seen a car do this before. Man, if you cut the roof out of it, I think I could get in it and I could ride it with you. This dude was huge. He was like 6'3". Like, he, <laughs> like, fuck? It, he, he was... He His name was, was probably Bubba. Bubba. <laughs> Bubba had a badass Chevrolet Suburban. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. I saw this man drive down the dirt road by the racetrack, and I was like, Coy, whose fucking Suburban is that? <laughs> that thing is He's like, you know how many times I tried to buy that Suburban? But that's yeah. a glorified redneck right there. Come Hell find, yeah. Come to find out, that's Roy's, that's Roy's redneck suburban. <laughs> Dude, but so that suburban's funny. so sick. But yeah, he called, he gave my uh, my drift car its official name, Weak Guy. So if you look at the front of my car, from the front, like Weak one guy. eye, oh. one eye's up, like one headlight's where it needs to be, and the other one's tilted just, just down a little down. bit. Kind of like Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> 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 You know, like he'd be, he'd be doing that thing oh, to you. <laughs> so yeah, like it's weak guy. So from now on, my car is gonna Roy from Driven Luck Sir. God, I hope that's his dude. Name. <laughs> if it ain't his name, it is now. Yeah, he called it weak guy, and I'm like, oh, I'm never God, changing that. So and that's funny. yeah, that's gonna go on the front of it. <laughs> God, I hope his name's Roy. <laughs> You put thanks, Roy, on the spoiler on right. the back. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, Roy. <laughs> and a sticker of Natty Light on the side. Like, my what man. What is happening? He hydrated <laughs> with Natty Lights. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> oh. Actually, all right. So let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, yeah, driven Lux Circuit. So, you. Boy, okay. I, you will get me going. Boy. Let's, start at the, let's start at the car first because I like. You were throwing some backies and shit. What what angle kit are you running? Uh, still the same angle kit I had the last time I was on here. FDS V1 Mega Mantis kit. Like V1, baby. V1. Like, it, nothing's there broken. There you go, Josiah. Look there, at that. Nothing has broken. I don't know why 
All y'all, there's a lot of y'all folks you out haters. there. You haters. Y'all be, oh, those hymns. The hymns always, bro- I have not broken a single hymn. If you make sure they're tight, Ex- they won't break. Mm. Ex- yeah. Fight me. I'm yeah. <laughs> like if it, I have not broken a tie rod, a hymn, n- nothing. It's still the same from last year. That's crazy. Yeah. Like every it, single, you haven't had to replace a single arm on that. On I that have track. not replaced a single arm. I have a spare arm. I have a spare tie rod. It, I'll say it every time. I used to drive around the car until I put that angle kit on there, and then it's just, yeah. My my brain's linked to like you said. It shows the R and D that's put into it. Yeah, he does. That man is he's just as a knowledgeable man. Great man. It's yeah, scary smart. <laughs> truthfully, yeah. Like his, he thinks on another level. Like yeah. his his smarts are. He's got to dumb himself down. Yeah, his Corvette is yeah. changing drifting like yeah right now yeah you are it, it that car and is right a, now that Corvette is and a right monumental now. structure into the history of drifting because like realistically he okay he put a I'll put the video on the screen he put a video a video breaking down almost every single thing in this car and it's fascinating it, it's it's a work of art like it's fascinating is not even just that like just the way everything moves together and the way he fucking inboard brakes or whatever the fuck they're called yeah inboard brakes that that ride, what that ride on the quick like the <laughs> Dude, inside that's of the crazy quick. so wild. that's what whistling diesel has on his fucking monster max yeah yeah like that's like the technology is insane that he put into this car like he's like he create like it's not like he's creating yeah he's takes like He's taking things from different aspects and like, huh, I wonder how I can relate that to drifting or make something better. And I think it all Mm -hmm. entailed on like the rotational mass of like everything on the outside of the wheels. Yeah. And why you watch his podcast at all? I I catch the clips. Like he talks a lot about that stuff on his podcast. It's more business related, but I I love it. And his motivate I love his motivational comments. Yeah. Like I'll be sitting at work in the morning like six AM and I'm like, he'll hit me with like he'll have one of those come off like his 30 second clip and i'm sitting like (laughs) josiah be saying some like real solid shit and i'm like man it's my fucking day pump me up bro fuck yeah i'm gonna win this day you damn right josiah i'm gonna win this day boy Woo! turn that shit off and i get out and i go i'll go win today (laughs) hell yeah but yeah that's that's the clips i see from he'll he'll snip it in like some good like motivational yeah that's what i see from and appreciate from him yeah changing the game changing the game baby Oh, always. Growing. Anyways, why we why we brought up FD in the first place? Sorry, FD. backies, baby. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> tell me about. All right, so I haven't gotten to actually drive driven Lux Circuit, obviously, because my car is almost done being tuned, so it'll be at the track soon. But how was that track? Because <laughs> I just texted him the other day and was like, "Dude, I am so proud of y'all. This is insane. What this track is doing already. It's it's awesome. Yeah. But it looks so fucking fun to drive." <laughs> like the so the videos don't do it justice as to like the elevation changes so yeah like i, I so i studied some drone footage before i went and i got some ideas because i was going to be the only guy there and i was like well i'm gonna go with a plan mm. i'm gonna try some stuff i'm gonna get some good stuff for them. so the like, video you showed me showed it kind of well because it was on the other side of the sweepers so yeah you you couldn't really see your car coming up the hill oh no to th- the entry not yeah. at all so I'll, I, if we, i'll put that one up there too i think i have a video <laughs> like i'll send you a video of me walking down what i consider the straight stretch over the crest into the first corner so oh, when you're walking yeah. down the front stretch if you're if you if you were to like put yourself at like say you're sitting in your in your car at mm-hmm. car level and you're just, just stopped you real. cannot see over that crest you yeah. cannot see the corner where you're going over top of that so what i did coy and i were walking the track and I, I, I asked him, I was like, so what's your reference point if you're like, if you can't see where you're going and that's the technicality of this track is phenomenal. It's fantastic. Yeah. So each, there's so much attitude and you have to be so technical on this track. It's, it, it, it relit my yeah. love for drifting realistic. Like it was, it allowed me Good. to do new things and like come back to old ways and like really like reminisce on like some old school stuff that we used to do. Yeah. And like because y'all were ba- it's it all right. The essence of it was to bring back 
the feel of low horsepower drifting. Yes. Because majority of Japanese layouts are high horsepower entry slowing down as you go. High speed entry. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah, sorry. Yeah. High, I said high, yeah, high horsepower. horsepower what the yeah. fuck? High speed yeah. entry. I'm talking like, yeah. about low horsepower. Tongue twisted. Yeah. Anyways. So, yeah, the high entry and it slows down as you go. And yeah. I think he hit that like pretty nailed it perfectly nailed it so like granted every entry i did how big of a back can i do so i was not easy <laughs> on tires like no, and by no means by no means was i easy on tires at all like i took one set of kendas it's all i had i was like yeah. i'm gonna make it work and like i did they lasted all day like mm -hmm. i was doing backy after backy like I, I did two normal entries like and i just i just learned like Last month at Tandem Nights in the rain, how to do backies. I was like, it's wet. Why not? So I would just throw it in there and just let it float. And I'm like, this is way easier than I thought. Yeah. And then, so this is like my first weekend where I actually like tried to do backies on a dry track, but going back to the track. Cause it's an appropriate corner to do it. It, cause you can come over. I don't know there. another track around here that has an appropriate corner like that. And, and the, like you could come across with so much speed. And if you come out, if you come across the crest at 90, you the car floats so much. It gets so light, and you feel weightless yeah. coming all the way down to that hill. Dude. And then you whoop, 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 and then you just roll back into it, and it feels so good every single time. And then you get, okay, oh so you, you come, I'm coming up the straight, right? And I ask Quest, Where's, uh, what's your point of reference here? Like, when I'm here, what am I looking at? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you don't have anything you look at? And he's like, no, I don't know where the turn's at. I've been here. Like, I, it's my track. <laughs> I, I, I mapped it out. Yeah, I, like, I, I own this thing. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like okay, cool. Yeah, so like, sorry. <laughs> dumb question. My bad. Damn. I don't know. What was <laughs> I thinking? Yeah. So anyways, about a half mile, whenever y'all go to this track, you'll see it. A half mile off in the distance, you'll see these trees. <laughs> There's a V in the trees. Look at my face. There is, <laughs> there is a V in the trees. Okay? To the this side. There's a tree. If you aim for this tree, every single time you come down for that straight, it's going to put your car exactly where you need to be. So, like, say they took a Nabari flag and put it on that tire stack back there. That'd be yeah. the same thing as a point of reference. You need a point of reference on a racetrack. But anyways, that was my point of reference going over top of this crest because if I knew I was pointed in that direction, mm -hmm. I know I wouldn't go off the track this way. I know I wouldn't go too shallow on the inside and, like, destroy their dirt and drag a bunch of dirt onto the track. So yeah. that corner, please pay attention, guys, when y'all go. Try not to drag the front end of your car across that dirt on the entry because then it just drags all that dust and debris down across through there. So, like, the point of reference really helps in that aspect as well as to where you need to go, where you need to be because, obviously, we don't do dirt tracks. We don't do dirt cars. We don't have – there's yeah, no grip yeah. in dirt. Like, it's unpredictable. You want to stay on the track anyways. But as you come over through there, you, you see where you're going to go and you're wrapping back around. And I sit so low in my car as I'm wrapping around, I, I, I can't even see the track. Because you're going right back up the hill you just came off of. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you're kind of like, you're like, you're looking up trying to find out, like, yeah, because it's all dirt through there. And if you come too shallow, you're going to go over the dirt. Ooh. So, you got to come out wide and then stay wide, cut it. And then you wrap around the center section. And you can, like, if you get it just right and float it and just ease on the left foot brake mm. and just drag it. But you know, you're like at slight angle. But that ass in still planting and it's rotating that corner. When you hit it just right, I swear to God, it's sexual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> like you come through there and you just and you're floating and you know you got to snap back. So as soon as you snap back, walk the track, folks. Walk the track. There's an area over there in the track they're gonna fix. I told them they don't need to. Cause like it yeah. adds like there's a rough, it's a rough section. Granted, it's a grace area. Like if you run it way too wide, it's better hitting this like what is a rough area. Then off into the dirt and the sand because it's a high speed area. You want to be able to kind of gather the car up and mm. keep going. Because if it you just the the I guess well they had asphalt a, yeah like they just up. they just patched it themselves. No, they did. Uh, it wasn't anything that the the paving company did or nothing like that. It was just an area of the track where you can come through hauling, and you might need just that little extra cushion if if the car shimmies or shakes and you hit some dust and run it wide. You don't want to drift on it because it will destroy your tires. And is where at on the on the layout is this? So you come as you come into entry turn and when you turn back around, you come up the hill, hit the little inner, and as you come back to the back section, 
So you're going to go, you're coming that around sharp the sharp hairpin at the right before that, oh, right, right before, before that, that, there's the little a little zigzag. Yeah. Where you set up to go right back to the hairpin, like over to the left, they patch that themselves. So if you hit that, it's going to destroy your tires. But oh, that, in my okay. opinion, you can run that line. I did it. And it makes it so much fun to where you don't hit that patch, but you got to run ah. it. That's another technicality. So like, it's, it's almost like if you hit it, it's going to be detrimental to your day. Don't hit it. <laughs> but, but it, like, what the fuck? yeah. So like it, that to me, I appreciate that. Like, yeah. It, imagine that as a rock or imagine that as a ditch. Like you're on a tug out in Japan. Don't go there. Like, yeah. But you still want to run a gangster there. line? Don't do it. Then like you could come up through there and float and just barely miss it with your left rear tire on an S chassis. Although those other guys, I don't know big cars, like my wheelbase, I come through there in an S chassis and kind of float the car, yeah. barely miss this rough patch, and then just mat the gas again to come and just huck it into that hairpin and get the car completely 90, lock it down, like clutch in, foot brake, just locked everything up, ah, and just light it off again. <laughs> but don't, like, you float it to the point of, okay, that's all my momentum. I'm yeah. going to get back. I'm going to slip the clutch and get grip and power back down because right after that hairpin, you need to be matted in second, yep. matted in third. You're coming around through there. And as soon as you get that, like you, you come in through with some slip angle. And as soon as it like plants like this, you load that right rear spring up. And it, as soon as, if you come through there right, and as soon as you load that right rear spring up, you see over top of that crest and you're like, all right, cool. If go fast. Like, yeah. Yeah. Cause coming over, like you, it's way, it's farther than you expect. You could come up really shallow and you will a few times and that's mm. fine. It's just going to, you're going to be able to know you can go that much further in turn one. Cause I came up shallow a few times and I was like, yo, I could <laughs> come in gangster to this. So I'll click second and look, I'm the, sure you lose a quite a bit of speed coming up that hill. Well, like it'll, I'm it's slowing so like, you down if you're floating. Oh right yeah. There. Yeah. If you're floating, like it scrubs a ton of speed. Like I have some backy fail videos to where like i thought i was going <laughs> ah. fast like it went like i just i wasn't going fast enough and i came in shallow and drug that dirt on the track mm -hmm. and i'm like i see the clips after the fact and i'm like damn and like dumbass coy's dumb dad dumb and ass. everybody has to come out and like their mom's out there with a the broom and they're sweeping that off and it's just me out there and i'm like don't go off track todd don't go off track so i like i was out of guy <laughs> yeah like every time i felt like i was gonna go off track i would try to get the clutch in so i wouldn't kick dirt everywhere like try and be respectful of these places you go folks that's another thing. Yes. Be respectful of the tracks, the track owners. They, they, they'll they respect you. I think the drivers do very well. People that are involved, like, are in the pits. Yeah. Seem to do well keeping, like, being respectful of the venue. But, dude, some of the fucking um, spectators. Yeah. They, oh, my God. Pigs. Slops. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, the, the, uh, David Patterson's event, the Cosmic Drift event. Yeah. I, was, I went back there for sunday just to hang out for a second and before i went back home and where everyone was parked for spectators there's trash everywhere yeah but then you go in the pits and it's, everything's clean as a whistle yeah i get sometimes like these these things might not be they might not have enough trash cans for the spectator count they have but nah fuck that lanier's got plenty yeah they're everywhere they're then fucking they're, there's, everywhere then those people are dirtbags it's just you, them you, dropping them out the out the door of their car. See that I I can't stand someone that deliberately oh, litters. I can't stand that. But like us as drifters, I feel like we're at the end of the day. If even if your trash can's full, like at least put the trash all in one designated area. Mm -hmm. Make it easy to pick up for the track crew. Don't yeah. spread that shit everywhere. At least like bag it up and like that's what I try to always do. Like I load my car up at the racetrack. I get everything from out from underneath my trailer, everything out from underneath my truck. If I have trash, I gather it in like a Kroger bag or like some kind of bag I got in there. And I'll put it all in a trash can. Yeah. I'll gather up the pits. Like, cause it, we have like 14, 15 cars every time we go anywhere. So like we have a huge group. We make a lot of trash. We don't leave messes at racetracks. Cause yeah. we, we respect where these people have us. This is their homes. So especially at driven luck. If y'all got driven luck, like, this is a, that's a family deal. Like, I don't know. Y'all may not know that. Like they uprooted their life to dedicate their life to a racetrack. Like they, they sold homes. They like left jobs. 
they are dedicated to this and love this and have a passion for this. And like, mm -hmm. that's something I can respect. Like why well, went there? Do you want people to fuck with your job? No, no, exactly. Like you respect, like that's like you go there. That's their, that's, that's their, like, that's their homeland. Their racetrack is their homeland. Yeah. Don't disrespect people's homelands. But yeah, they like, they uprooted their entire life. It's like, man, we're going to build a racetrack. Like, not many people, I don't know many family members, like parents, mom and full dad. Full families that full, are like, okay. Full families. Like, they they took on like like a farm, like a, a whole farm. They got goats. They got chickens. I went around this morning. I had never been to, okay, I, I'm a. Dude, I'm, it's, t it's like a mini episode now. You got a fucking your, zoo. Yes. Like, I, I, so <laughs> I. Zoo and a racetrack. Da, 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 da. So I'm going to, this is my day at Driven Luck. We drove all day. I was filthy. Like, hey, man, come shower. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to the bin store and then go grab some food. And I'm like, bin store? What's a bin store? So <laughs> a bin store is like all the Amazon packages. And you go to these bin stores and look through open packages and stuff like that. And they're cheap. I think we paid $7 for every item that was on the table. Yeah. And some of these things are like very expensive items. But anyways, the entire community, as I went out with the family from Driven Luck, the entire community knows these folks already yeah well like that community has backed that racetrack and like even the community is gonna that start family. bringing a lot of more people to that we town. went and we went and ate at a mom and pop pizza shop and like they know all those folks already yep. like it's just a back to this morning after we went and ate last after we went and ate all the pizza like came back we hung out worked on caden's ls car put some power steering lines nice. on it Coy nice. was sitting over there with a guitar Otis the Otis the Basset Hound was sitting there chilling with us, hanging out. Like it's this is like you they have such an enjoyable experience. Like, granted, they might have like spread some extra hospitality onto me and I I appreciate yeah, that and yeah. I'll be forever grateful to them. Cause I got up this morning, he like their dad had coffee made. He came over to the van. He said, Hey man, he's like, I'm about to put some coffee on. You want some coffee? Hell I yeah. said, I can't start my day without coffee, my man. I'll be right down. <laughs> <laughs> so I came down and like while the coffee was brewing, we were feeding the, like I wasn't. I, if I go back, I know next time they're going to catch me out there about 7 a.m. I'm going to be feeding chickens, <laughs> like <laughs> yep. getting the egg. Because I went through the whole process with her dad, just That's watching so them cool. walking around the property with them. Like they're that hospitable. Like yeah. you, you're you just, you're made to feel like family there. And that really kind of, like that touched my heart. And like when you can touch my heart with with drifting, and like just brings that all together. Mm -hmm. Man, I, that, that. That place is on the way up. Yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. I 100% support that. Yeah. Yeah. He needs to... Well, he didn't really need to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> that, that place is great. Yeah. I, I just need to go. I really wanted to come out there. I was supposed to. I was supposed to go out there and possibly take my car, but it wasn't ready yet. Yeah. That was been sick. I was Dude. like on the way up, and they're like, yeah, by the way, Dawson might bring the car out here. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd yeah. be sick. You may have to come back down sooner. Oh, bro, like, you got no idea. I have. I, I've i spread those videos out to all my homies. Yeah. And I am already, like, getting, Rounding people up oh, for, for a private day. Boy, I got, I, I can, you give me two days, I could bring 15, 20 cars to that place. Like that. I promise you. Like, these yeah. people, like, like, when you could sell a racetrack like that, and, like, people want that nostalgia and, like, that. That style, I know so many guys that eat that style up. Oh, you don't yeah. have to go to USA or, or you don't have to go to Japan. That's kind of down here in the South now. Like, yeah, we got us out. We got us a place in the South to go party for sure, dude. Yeah, that's what I want them to build as a, as a more elevation change type layout eventually. Yeah, I know they're gonna get to something like that. And the but... prop, I don't, I can't remember how many acres they said they bought. They got plenty. Like they can expand. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. if I we can help them they expand, said. they can expand. And yeah. they have, like, I was sitting there this morning. Like, I got up this morning. It's when I go back to it, it's like, it's super peaceful out there. I was just walking around and like the, the rolling hills they have out there. Like, I was just sitting there, like, like the skate park vibes, like the BMX yeah. vibes, like, of sitting there, like, man, that'd be a sick jump. And, but I was visualizing it as a racetrack. I'm like, oh, you could go up through there. And like, <laughs> yeah. Get back over into <laughs> there. And that would be sick because you'd come down through there and then loop back up. And yeah. I'm just seeing all these rolling hills and endless possibilities out there at this property. Oh, dude. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, 
Like I'm just I'm becoming. We need a dirt more... drift car now. <laughs> Stat. Right? We gotta we figure this to out. Practice. <laughs> Give me a Cavalier. <laughs> Let's find the best layout and we'll just roll it. <laughs> yeah. That that uh, yes. I mean that that property's endless. So, Dude. Yeah. I'm so excited to see what they do with that. I I'm so proud of them. Yeah. Crazy. So proud. Didn't you know them like from yeah, we back were, then? Yeah, we were. So we we were both in the Navy, both in Hampton Roads area. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah. So. I would, Coy and I were always kind of like in the same car group. We never like did, Na- we never shared Navy experiences together, but we were into cars and like Navy was just kind of like a common ground for us. Yeah, so it's most military people. Yeah. yeah. So, but like we would hang out outside of that and like go drift together and like we would run into each other and I bought some fenders from him at one point in time from Caden. Yeah. Bought yeah. some fenders from him from my S13. The ones I had on there are actually last year. So yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I've known them for a while and then I watched them move and like, he got out of the Navy and like went and did really cool shit engineering wise. And yeah. I was like, man, that's the cool shit. <laughs> and out of nowhere, and I'm like, this motherfucker got a racetrack. <laughs> what? When the hell did this happen? Right? <laughs> when did he move to Alabama? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. Out <laughs> there, Papa Boucher and the Louisiana Mud Dogs down there in Alabama. <laughs> Just gave, it, gave us all the whole Irish goodbye. <laughs> right? <laughs> dipped out. <laughs> yeah, like, where'd they go? <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, that's cool. So this yeah. was kind of like a reunion type deal. It too. was, yeah. And like we had all kind of met a long time ago, but not formally. So like it wasn't, mm-hmm. we weren't like just meeting for the first time this time. We we uh, we uh, kind of knew that we knew each other, so it was comfortable. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's kind of talk about the Pro-Am stuff from this year. So uh, with, I know we talked a little bit about it earlier but a lot of the stuff that you learned this year with running more of a full like pro-am series taking it a little bit more serious what are some things you're going to change going into next year or are you even really going to focus on pro-am or what's what's kind of the goal honestly um after being my first year of like the real heavy competition style i had fun and i do have fun doing it when things go well yeah. But when you're doing it by yourself and it it's a lot of added stress and as soon as the first thing doesn't go right, like it's, you kind of take the fun out of it. And when you take the fun out of drifting for me, you take the fun out of like what I love. So yeah, as much fun as I had this last year doing all the competition style drifting and like traveling here and there and see where I match up. And like, I did well within the pro-am series, like against like Christian Nelson, guys like Dustin Miles, a pro strict yep. prospect driver, uh Jonathan Naren, prospect driver. He might have even been pro one. But mm-hmm. regardless, Shredder. Like yeah. he's like there's five, six guys up there that are like elite level guys. And I finished I'm pretty sure like I'm gonna say top ten in points. Uh, with those guys. I was ec- ecstatic. Being a one man guy, yeah. four hundred horsepower car, going out there like I don't have a dog box. I don't have anything crazy. Like like yeah, I got an upgraded transmission, but it's like I still got to use a clutch. Yeah. I got I got three fifty Z stub shafts. Like it's a simple deal. These like, but to be able to go out there and hold my own, I proved to myself, and like I'm happy. Like mm-hmm. you know, like I did that. I can do it. Like I can drive on that level. Yeah. If I had more car, I don't have more car. Mm-hmm. So like I. So you were never like, in, your intent was never to go big, go to pro one or anything like if, that. It could be if it's in yeah. the cards. I'm not going to take it out of the cards. I can't take it out of my Just pocket. It's not important to you. It's not. It's if I can keep simple fun, like I can have simple fun. Like mm-hmm. simple fun to me is the most fun. Yeah. But if it, I can't come out of my pocket and go run a pro am series like I did this year. Hell no. No, there's no that way. It's crazy. I can't come out of my pocket and upgrade the car to where it needs to be to go run an even higher pro am level series. So, like, if it's in the cards and someone's out there and, like, they got a car and, like, I can get a great group of people together and we can get something rolling together and you can, and, like, offer me maybe some kind of ride out in a, out in a series for, like, a weekend and we could work something out. Like, that, I would absolutely access yeah. that avenue. Oh, yeah. I can't come out of my own pocket, though, and upgrade my car where I'm at now. So, with that being said, I'm kind of just going to, like, take a step back from the competition side. Like, I'll still go do the fun ones. Like mm-hmm. Sofa King with uh, uh, Catch My Drift and Joe Gorseski, yeah, up in uh, North Carolina. Great time, like uh, so, like it's Sofa King. Awesome is the event, 
and it's just a laid back like chill grassroots style competition yeah. like and at the end of the day you hang out like it's just a good overall vibe i'll do those types but i'm not going to do the ones that's like the five thousand dollar payouts the like big yeah. stressors and payout stuff is it's that's, dying, it's bro. a lot it's a lot and i i want to step back to stay on that grassroots level and like go interact like i want to put my personality into my driving more like I want to do okay. more creative content with driving. Okay. So gotcha. And like, kind of like, almost in like a skate type vibe videos. Yeah. Like, yeah. you put a little bit more personality in like the fish eye lens and shit. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> oh, absolutely. Bro, like, <laughs> yeah. Well, just kind of like a you go have fun. Like you highlight the day, like vlog style, but mm -hmm. it's it's just more you capture everything more, and then like you add you take more time with the clips you make and like the, what you put on a social media, you edit it, put some, some cool music to it and you mm -hmm. make the video an enjoyable experience to me, making video an enjoyable experience adds to the driving level that much more. So yeah. like I, like we were talking about earlier with the journalism stuff, I appreciate getting that good angle, like walking around, catching that good angle, but then being able to like add that nasty driving style, your personality of driving style to that clip. So if yeah. you can catch both, like a skate viral, like that epic skate clip, like that's what I grew up watching, like BMX clips and skate clips, like Ryan Sheck were like, like those, those bangers. Like if you can like go to the day, like I set out now, like I want to go get that banger. Oh yeah. Like it, just for example, for at Driven Luck, I told my buddy before I left Virginia, I was like, I've, I've studied drone footage. Like my banger clip is going to be backwards before the top of the crest. <laughs> like and he was like yep. my was like man i don't know like I, I, you're that's not you don't have as much room as you think and i'm like i'm going Want a bit <laughs> i'm going to get my banger <laughs> and kodak courage <laughs> baby <laughs> yes. like, that's the kind of like that shit right there gets me riled up well you want to get me like hot to try and excited about some shit yeah like let me go out and get some Dude. bangers but add some personality to it you know what i'm saying like that to me is what I want to do this next year. I want to get out to racetracks and get that content, like just that put together like a skate type vibe video of just everything's the experience. Influenced by bangers. <laughs> yeah. Like you, like set out, go to the track with a goal. Like my goal this weekend, like I had my goal before I left Virginia and I, that was my goal. So like go to the track with a goal. Yeah. If you go to the track with or a plan. Like, okay, well, I'm going to go practice this first session and press that second session. Like, or I want to learn this today. A lot of times you get out there and you get too interacted, like you get too involved and the nervous yeah. and like the, the sitting on grid and you're frustrated and you, God, I just want to drive. Take a, Dude, <laughs> take a step back so and be like, turn a little bit of music on. Vibe. Like turn some music on, sit in grid, and like make grid happy. And like when you're happy and then you're like, man, well, I'll go out here and maybe I'll try 360. Mm -hmm. Go out there and try 360 if you never try 360. If like. Just, I have, and boy, is that harder than it looks. <laughs> harder on the car. Oh my God. <laughs> than you think, bro. Like when you just chuck it and lock and yeah. it just snaps and falls the lock. And like, I did it the first I always time. think of what Denofa said in that one video where it's just, you flick it as hard as you can and you hold it all the way at lock until it spins all the way around and you mat it. Yep. You let that, like, you, you, that seems simple enough. Let's go. <laughs> you skeet it and eat it and let that motherfucker eat. Yeah, yeah. no. Nah. My brain froze whenever I got to it. I did it. At, I was going to do it at Beach Bin. Yeah. Come around the sweeper and I'm sitting there like this and I like coming across the middle and I'm like, all right, do it. Do it. Dude, dude wait, <laughs> fuck, fuck. And then I like fl half ass flicked it at the very end, and I was like, that was just horrible. Yeah. Like you gotta you gotta really spring off that right rear and then commit. Like yeah. ah! until you come all the way around. So Ugh. but then like I was doing one it, day. I learned we'll get I, it one day. The backies in the wet, and then I learned three sixties in the wet because I'm like, you know what? It's wet. Like yeah. there's not a lot of people driving. Go out here and learn Smart. something new. You're not going to wear through a bunch of tires. It's like, granted, the wet days are easier on equipment, mm -hmm. like overall, because it's just a less strain on the drivetrain. So go out there and like take a take a wet day and rent, learn something new, yeah. like sliding backies around, like just chuck it in and let it let it slide. Best thing to do is I learned how to drift in the rain. I used to do like 
my Toyota pickup truck. I would go out. I stuffed that some bitch in a wall hard one time. And if that <laughs> damn, if that cold plug wire didn't come off, I was going to drive that some bitch home. And they'd have never known who went through that <laughs> fence. <laughs> my dad was hot. Anyways, off to- <laughs> off topic. Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> I was like sixteen. It was a long time ago. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like if you could do it, I, the 360 in the rain, like I came through the center section and just huck it, chuck it and hold it. Granted, yeah. it's super hard on the car. Like you could feel it. Everything oh, yeah. just kind of binds up and stretches and flexes. And you're like, I ain't doing that anymore. This damn tin yeah. can S chassis is going to fall apart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you start feeling yeah. bad for the car. And yeah. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you, you come back and like dash. <laughs> yeah. One side of the car is hanging lower than the other. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh God. <laughs> Yeah, well, walking with a limp. Now. <laughs> yeah, that old girl got a gun walk. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, what'd she do last night? Right. Okay, so we were talking about pro am, right? Yeah, we were on pro am. Then we went. Pro- we went to pro am to put and driving with personality and skate videos and yeah, I like that though. Tangents. Okay, so yeah, yeah, you were talking about you're wanting to do the, the more different style of content next year. Yeah, and more um, f- just more fun, creative. I want to use my yeah the creative side of my mind with a camera to help me make more creative content. Do you feel that's what's going to drive basically the funding of the next season? Do you rely on your content for sponsorships and stuff like that? I feel as if it's a big factor mm-hmm. for a company because yeah, a company can come to you and say like. Or you could go to a company and say, can you come sponsor my race car? But you have to offer them something. And I feel as if I can reach more companies than just car companies with my personality. Yeah. Because I like I appreciate the hos- hospitality that comes along with a sponsorship. So when I bring this last event, I had a company come on and we worked together for a bunch of things and they brought out, uh, I think it was 12 of their employees from the local company. And I got, we cycled their employees through three drift cars. Nice. We gave them as many nice. rides until they said they were done the entire day. That's part of like, when you come on what I can sell to you and these, and like, I, I take the GoPro camera and I put it inside the car and I capture all their faces, the smiles, the laughs, their eyes. Like they, it's a roller. I, it, people are like, "What's it like riding a drift car?" It's a roller coaster that you cannot predict. You never know what's going to happen next. Yeah, yeah, especially as a passenger. And I find it so much or fun, like as a passenger, as somebody that, that you don't know what's going to happen. You just you can predict as a driver what you're going to do, what you're going like when you're going to lunge forward. Yeah, yeah. They can't. Yeah, no, I love they have that. No idea. You because I like to drive it in hard and jam on the brakes. Hard, yeah, and I love watching the passengers' heads. Like they're like, <laughs> <laughs> and like I swear to God, they about them, they about head button, they belly button. themselves, yeah, because they don't. It's a it's a roller coaster. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, so they're like, what? And they head butt their belly button, and I'm over here <laughs> laughing just the whole time, just because I know it's about to come again this next corner, but they still don't. So like, <laughs> yeah, so they're just getting flung and they're laughing and they're having a good time. And they hold their harness. <laughs> they get out and they're talking to their. There's just like the drivers. So like they get out as a driver, we get out and we like slap hands and hug and we're having a great time and dapping everybody up. And yeah. It's the best experience we've ever had in life. Imagine that for a company, like getting that for doing that for a company when they can get out of the car, they talk to all their employees right there and they're having a good time and they're yeah. like, they're getting the overall experience. So that's this next year. What I would like to do with people is like work with companies that are wanting to be a part of drifting and like. I'll get their people out there and we'll have fun together. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hell yeah. I like, I I wanted to bring that up because I show, I wanted to show that like all the, not to like, that sounds so weird, but you're not, you don't have a massive following. Yeah. But you're still posting content. That's good. Yeah. And it shows that it's good to the companies, which in turn gets you partnership. Exactly. So, and it's quality, I like quality wholesome. It, exactly. So you don't need to be a big creator. Adam LZ literally said this in one of his videos at Ebisu recently this week about how it's so cool to see almost every single driver that's at Ebisu walking around vlogging 
with a camera when a few years ago he would have been probably the only one doing yeah. that and now so many people are finding a sustainable way to make a living doing it, it it's it's fucking cool dude it's fantastic you don't have to be big no and like just if, put effort in yeah and I, if i it, i take such passion in like content and creating videos i don't care how well they do like i don't i don't know how to play the algorithm i don't really necessarily care Mm -hmm. I don't really like granted. Yeah. When the video does well, it's a great pat on the back when like thousands of people see it and you can get thousands of eyes on these companies. That's the overall goal. But I make content that I enjoy to make and I don't upload it. If it does, if it doesn't do well and it gets 23 likes, I don't delete it because I put my time, effort and love. Like I love making the entire aspect of a video, like from yeah. the driving to the filming to like, I commend you all. Like, you're editing what you got to do editing wise. Cause I know you take, you go in there and like, people don't want that 1.6 seconds of dead air. That 1.6 yeah. seconds of the beginning of a video, they're swiped to the next one. So you got to take that 1.6 seconds of that video. You got to cut that out. You got to grab their attention immediately. Yep. So, and you then, like, if you quit talking, cut. And you, you take that entire section out until you start talking again. I can show you a timeline when we get off the. Dude, I uh, imagine, like, I'll. I'll put, well, I don't know if I'll do that. Never mind. <laughs> like, my, uh, like but, my, my editing app is just like, you could see all the little cut marks. Yeah. And it's, I'm, you know, it's, I have like 75, 80, 90 cut marks in a 15 minute video. Mm -hmm. Like, but that's just, it's the aspect. You don't want to put all this effort into a video, upload it, and like ride on the only thing of it doing well. Yeah. Like I, that's not me. I if put, you do something good enough for long enough, it's bound to succeed. Exactly. I don't care if it takes ten years to get ten thousand followers. I don't care if people watch my videos and it gives them that kick of dopamine or that like that feel good moment or I say something funny and I make people laugh. Yeah. That's what I'm in it for. Like I get people all the time. Like I have a my, my whole other TikTok side of drifting thing. Like I, I, I focus more on the positivities of life. Yeah. It might rain in the day, but you got to find a way to make that day positive. Oh like, yeah. So like, that's a whole other side. And like, I get, I get messages from folks all the time. thanking me. Like you get, you get, you put such a smile on my face in the morning. You brighten my day. Mm -hmm. That means so much to me like that. That's what I'm saying. Like as a whole in a content of what I want to do is just overall happiness. Yeah. And when it, when you boil it, boil it down, those are the people that you want following you. Exactly. Anyways. Exactly. That's people because, you wouldn't want to hang out with. Yeah. Most of all my followers, I could hang out with, like mm -hmm. I can relate to them, yeah. like, yeah. So, and then to, on another note, like, say you get, for instance, say you have three hundred followers on Instagram. Okay, take those three hundred followers, put those three hundred people in a room. That's a lot of people to talk to. Yeah, yeah. Like when you yeah. think of it in that aspect, like, do you have three hundred people following you and interested in your stuff? If you could take all three of those people and put them in three hundred people and put them in a room, mm -hmm. could you talk to them? No. Nope. Could you get up? Could you get up in front of a like? <laughs> Not every single a, like, one individually. So when, you, when you think about it, that's a lot of people. Yeah. Like, but granted, social media nowadays, like it's it's super easy to reach hundreds of thousands of people. Oh yeah. Super easy. Yeah. Yeah. TikTok. So do it easy enough. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. TikTok is like everybody Which was kind of weird now. Everybody was hating on it. But. Everybody used to, like, it was just the, it, it got bad hate for the longest time. Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm not one to just sit there and scroll through it. I yeah. can't do that. I gotta, I gotta be making content. Like, I don't, yeah. I'm not one to scroll through reels and stuff. Like I said, I'm the one that wants to make it and put it out there and let people enjoy it. Yeah. That's the. I do it just to study. What do you mean? To study other people's content. So you watch to see. So you see oh, it. Oh, I'm constantly like you watch the way people edit things. Anytime I'm if I'm watching a movie, I'm studying. Like I it's not You ever catch mics my, and frames? I was who the fuck was I talking about? Was I talking about this with you? My brain doesn't shut off. No, that was somebody else. I don't know who it was. But like literally my brain does not shut off. Yeah. I'm on a eleven at all times. I just I, I can't stop. Yeah. So like as someone that knows how to edit, when I'm watching a movie, I'm like a burden to anyone else in the room watching a movie. Because I'm like, 
<laughs> you see that? That was fake as fuck. Or the the fucking producer went over there, told them do this while we shoot this segment, mm-hmm. and you're good. Or in a movie when they break from one scene to another scene, and the level in the glass changes. Yeah, you catch shit like that. Yeah, or if they're smoking a cigarette and the length is always changing and the cigarette yep. from frame to frame, you know it's not one consecutive shot. Yeah, which obviously it can't be. But Driving videos is like the easiest to point out too. Oh yeah, how many tire marks are on the road already? Exactly. So simple. Yeah, you got thirty five go, tire marks on. How many? Go times watch it? the Jim Connor videos over again now. R I P. I, yeah. R I P. That man. Like, but yeah, yeah, for real. A lot of his videos you notice on the ground. Did you see that uh, mm-hmm. Wheel Pros is now Hoonigan. What? Wheel Pros is Hoonigan's. What's that? Uh, we'll, Wheel we'll Pros. Skip we'll talk about that after. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just literally, my brain doesn't shut off. I'm always studying, especially car content. Yeah, like I'm because, studying everything. Yeah, I want to learn new tricks. So. Yeah, yeah, new tricks and everything's always cool because it keeps everything exciting. Yeah, yeah, and plus I got to stay updated. Exactly. Me. Just for this, for you yeah. guys. Yeah, You're content welcome. purposes. Yeah, you are the provider of the news for all of us. Like you provide you're an outlet for people like you're an outlet for me like i enjoy thoroughly which i barely even talk about stuff that people are doing in the industry like youtubers and drivers like i try not to a lot because i don't want my podcasts and content to only be relevant because of other people's content you're relevant in your own way that's that's yeah, what you're i want. Esta- yeah, yeah, yeah you've established like a place people can come and they know they can get fresh new stuff for sure. Like each time, Sick. like yeah, that makes me feel better. Yeah, like they know they're not going to come here and like find out what Adam LZ did last week or what Jimmy Oaks did on his new car. They're going to come here and like learn something about new people. Like you're going to touch on things that are going on in the world. Yeah, like that you're expected. It's, it's a drift podcast, but you like yeah. I've learned and enjoy and like. I just, just did it a minute ago with the LZ thing. Yeah, just hearing that people's... Was, that had nothing... To, LZ had nothing to do with what we were talking about, but it was the it's fact relevant. that people are making a sustainable living. Yeah. He said it. He's an influential person that said it. It just adds validity to it. Exactly. It, yeah, it, when you're of his stature, yeah, the that his stature is what adds the validity and the proof. The proof is in the pudding. Yeah. Like, it's, it's reachable. Yeah. So... Crazy. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Ah... Oh. If you're not posting content, you probably should. If yeah. you want to make a living in drifting, I've seen several of you guys comment that that's how you do it. Yeah. Have be per- consistent. Yeah. Be good at what you're doing and do it for long enough, even when you feel like it's not worth it. And be passionate. It'll work out eventually. It be still passionate. hasn't worked out for me. Duh. I, I mean, still do it. Doing all right. I mean, yeah. I Yeah, okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm very thankful. I'm sorry. Right, I'm very every- thankful f- for this. This is great. I love doing this. No, everybody needs a cheerleader. Bro, I'm like, that's one thing I enjoy too. Like, I'll be, I'm the biggest hype man for people that are doing good shit. Like, I'll be the biggest cheerleader. <laughs> I promise you. I'll be behind you, blowing you up. Cause, like, a lot of, like, a lot of people, like, you and I, like, we're not going to talk be about it. a ourselves. silent cheerleader. We're not uh, going to talk uh, about it. Oh, not me. Oh, Hell no, nah, bro. You do something cool, I'm gonna be the first one to let you know that shit was sick. Like, yeah. I'm the I'm the That's biggest fair. like a win. I'm is a different because I'm the I'm the introverted type. I'll like I'll pull you aside and be like, dude, that was absolutely gnarly. And that, that was fucking sick. Congrats. People appreciate that too. Because that you want like to connect. More. It does. You want to connect to that person. You yeah. want to deliver it to them so that they got it. And not yeah. That's a yeah. respectful thing too. I'll we'll try to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, all right. So back on, back to like what events you're going to be doing this year because we never really fully tackled that. We didn't but, like what your plan is. So like for me, I want one goal that I have is grid lives. I want to hit grid lives hard. I totally missed out so much on those. So I far. totally agree with that. And I don't know, like how big. Like, how do you get into a grid life? Is this like anybody can go type of deal? Well, it's application. Application. Based. And I think Nick Swan is the one that approved some. I might be wrong. Okay. I'd have to ask him. But, um, yeah, it's just an application process. Well, okay. See, I thought it was like you kind of got to – you got to kind of be picked and chosen to be able to go to grid life. For Laguna, it was. Uh, well, that was invite the, only. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. a whole other – Yeah. But are the normal ones – yeah, it's just application based. Yeah. 
Okay. So. I mean, yeah, like that they was just want to see basically that you can drive. You're not gonna fuck up the track. Your car's and, decent. Yeah, your car's yeah. not gonna fall apart and it's well put together. It yeah. doesn't look like pile ass. Stuff. Yeah. But I mean I I would hate that if you want. It's a fucking show. <laughs> it your is. car's supposed to look good at an event like that. Take pride in it, please. And you're also there. Yeah, you're there as an entertainment factor. Mm-hmm. Like entertain the people that are there. It's another thing. Yeah. That like ain't, I, that event ain't for you. That a grid that grid life, like you're there to entertain. Like entertain. Drive well. Drive cool. Do cool mm-hmm. stuff. Like, so Grid Life will never tell you this because <laughs> they shouldn't. But <laughs> I will. <laughs> yeah. Entertain people. But uh, I would like to go to Grid Life. And like, I went to Hyperfest. And like I said, going to those big style events takes a big budget because mm-hmm. you got to have like 20 tires. And like, you, if I can, I would 100% gladly go to those yeah. with some help. Like, because when. I put the big price on it. It takes the fun out of it. So, like, to me, I would like to hit. I would like to get with people and hit, be able to hit Hyperfest and, like, Grid Life. Like you say, Grid, grid Life Midwest. Oh, that yeah. looks like a riot. Is it yeah. Gingerman? Uh, shit. I know when you're there. just had Swan on, too, and I can't fucking remember. I'm so bad with names. But, and I'd also like to go to the bigger grassroots style events. Mid Pond. Um, you've never been to Mid Pond. Never been to Mid Pond, bro. Oh, I, I am so, so sorry, but it's amazing. I've heard it's my favorite track in the South. Is it, <sighs> dude? I want. I've always wanted to go. That might change going to Driven Luck. I will say that. I but... would, took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I was but going there. I was just saying, Mid Pond. Oh my yeah. god, dude! I can't rant and rave enough about Mid Pond. Yeah, like I would like to go to bigger, like your Spring Break Brat, uh, Spring Break bashes stuff like that yes. uh blood masters Shout up in Kevin. jersey like i would like to travel a little bit more north go to your bigger grassroots style events mm. maybe not hyperfest and grid life if those come cool awesome yeah. like i'll be a part of it i am down 100 percent. um but if i could like go do the smaller grassroots style i would travel in my van like make it a whole thing yeah that's the enjoyment i'm looking for mid is perfect for shit like that yeah like, go place you can camp and, like, hang out. Dude, and then, when you go, park on the other side of the track in the little cutout in the woods. Yeah. And then that, that's, that'll that literally be, like, camping for you. I might even cut You'll this out. But you, you're giving away secrets. No, I've said that <laughs> oh, a million yeah? times on oh, the really? podcast. Yeah, that's, if you got a big trailer, that's where they, they shove you. Oh, I know there's, like, no trailers because parking's limited. I've heard that. Oh, there's trailers. But Dude, they put them elsewhere. Trip. Like, they've got a hot pit with just cars. Ken's got his little nooks and crannies around the track that he squeezes. He puts them everywhere. When you oh, go, okay. you're going to see one of those, like, containers. Yeah. Um, Cargo off container. to the side. It's still there. So what I've been told. But, like, six to seven trailers are fitting back there. It doesn't look like it. But when, you, when he Tetrises you in there... Yeah. You realize it and you're like, wow, dude, this is crazy. <laughs> you go to mid And he'll up. even like if you if you take too long, he'll kick you out of your own truck. You go to not mid fit, Not like actually like kick you out, but he'll be like, All right, let me do it. Yeah. <laughs> you go to mid pond to learn how to drive a trailer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, hey. you're amazing, dude. Hey, backing up trailers and art. You gotta give credit where credit's due. Yeah. Yeah. And if you ain't doing it right, it's frustrating sitting there watching somebody back up a trailer. You're like, <laughs> Oh my god, just get out of the way. <laughs> Oh, uh, dude! What other like? What's the sorry, other track you yeah, sorry, to? if your man can't back up a trailer. <laughs> if he can't back up a trailer, he park probably parks at the diesel pump. Oh, beta male, <laughs> alpha male. <laughs> dude, where do you want to go? What's a new track so you want to go to? Uh, a new track? Yeah, like we're somewhere. You're getting like like come off like what a three year hiatus of not driving. Oh, God, tell me where do it. you want to go? We know driven luck. We know you want to hit rack because that's just a given. That's yeah. a given. Um, you've been to mid pond. It's not necessarily a specific track, um, but the drift indie Togue events, the Appalachia events. Those, those are those. That's, that's what I want. Those that touch and my final heart. bout. Um, U.S. Air. Yeah, U.S. Air. Yeah, that that's something I want to go even Point just to up. drive, <laughs> or not not to drive to watch. 
that's an event I would enjoy to go to just to watch and like just yeah go one time to enjoy it watching. Maybe one day I get invited. Never know. Yeah. But yeah. I do want to drive the track. It doesn't but I physically want to be at that track for final bout yes. driving final bout. Yes. I want that experience. That That's level. like a, a peak to me. Yeah. That level of driving is like a whole nother experience. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of those cars are fucking tin can piles of yeah, nothing. Just, but yeah, they're polished as hell. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how well can you polish a turd? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. Welcome to the north, baby. <laughs> right. But like, um, yeah, you should come up to like Virginia sometime for sure. Yeah, I want to. Um, cause isn't Seneca Circuit up there? Isn't that in Virginia? Where is that? Um, that like, I don't know if you want to go there. Oh, why? Um, the guy that the owner he, now kind of the owner now was the guy from Spirit Drift in Richmond. Oh, that stole all that money. Oh, yeah, he. Took a bunch. Some of my have close, you driven there? No. Okay. Some of my close friends, a lot of money. Yeah, like a lot of zero. Oh, but now, absolutely, Drift Indy's got us. <laughs> exactly. Which is that dude? I want to do that so bad, and I hope that I get invited. And I would be so thankful if I did because I grew up on the in the Appalachian Mountains of Bristol, Virginia. Like I grew up longboarding down four twenty one mountain, and mm-hmm. like so, my dad and I made big wheels. We took a bicycle frame, cut the like the top tube and everything else off to where it's just like basically the bottom half of the bike welded some axles on the back of it triangulated it to strengthen it took uh i borrowed two school chairs from high school thanks and uh <laughs> cut the bottom the metal frames off the bottom of them and zip tied not zip tied uh hose clamped them to the frame of the bike so like and put longboard wheels on the outside so it still has the front <laughs> bicycle tire longboard wheels on the back and i would run like 50 miles an hour like this is during Nitro Circus. Holy this shit. is a Nitro Circus days when they're like riding big wheels. And yeah, yeah. We'll run like seven up and down through there, and I'm like, whoa. So I was in high school, <laughs> and I'm like, I took a napkin. I hope my dad still has the napkin. I took. I have a bicycle driven. Like I drew a bicycle. Yeah. And then eliminated the top half, and I had like different angles, basically on a napkin drawn out of how we would build this. I brought it home, and my dad was like, we could easily do that. <laughs> like put longboard tires on the back, and we would bomb down these mountains. So that's how, if. That's how like I would really appreciate the Appalachian drift scene. Yeah. And would be so thankful because it's like it's kind of tied. I'm kind of tied into that Appalachian mountain vibe kind of deal. So that's something I really would really want to go at least experience. Watch. Yeah. 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 That's the rough thing with those events is the spectation is just you can't. It's <laughs> too hard. And we talked about like that and we were like, well, what happens if it turns into like a rally style event? Like if they, like they call it stage one and stage two and well, yeah. as they grow, like people are going to find out about it. People go and spectate rally, like, and yeah. they're, they're a hundred some mile an hour through the woods. Like Nuts. you don't, you know where not to stand. You don't stand on the outside of corners where like if something, if they get bound up and get yeah. into a bad situation, they're going to go off the track of the outside. Mm. So you like, there's, I feel like a lot of those are a lot more like regulated on the driver. So like. The drivers are a lot more skilled and proven to yeah, be skilled exactly. than a lot of the good people point. that would be at that event. Very good point. So yeah. that's something that has to be considered. And yeah. just the factor of insurance and drifting being so new. And is, being on the street. It's like insurance. I feel like insurance companies just straight up don't know how to insure drifting. There's a guy. Um, he's over. He's in charge of uh, U.S. Drift. Mm-hmm. Um, Brian Brian Eggert Oh okay Brian Eggert The former drift judge Is over top of US Drift And he's doing drifting so long That the insurance companies Trust him Like they put a lot Of faith into Brian Mm -hmm. And like He runs very good events So If I see like Anybody wanting to Grow as an event organizer Kind of like See what he's done Cause He's got He's got the insurance companies In his pocket Cause he does some some pretty cool stuff. That's the biggest issue I see with yeah. almost every single event host. Oh, yeah. the insurance stops me. Yeah, and if if like, they well, let's figure that out. If they can't <laughs> do, if they have to keep doing Appalachian Drift and no spectators, then so be it. Like mm. that's just you gotta you gotta you gotta make that sacrifice to go do that cool stuff. So if that's like if they 
chucks spectators out of it completely, so be it. Hopefully, yeah. I get invited to drive there one day. That would be so sick. Yeah. Yeah. It would have to... They, it, dude, I don't know. There would have to be one designated road within a series of, like, layouts. Because, like, dude, just imagine this was a drift week. Just imagine that for a second. Yeah. This day, meet up at this road. This is like fucking JDM nights, like toe drifting in yeah. the mountains. Like, like the route. This day, we're going to meet at this road, park Three. our cars right here, and then fucking tandem. Yeah. And just drive and we'll all day out on the, this road. The, the lookout at the top here. and the lookout at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Like that would be. Granted, it'd be more sanctioned than that, but well, like, you would have to. It would vibe. actually be planned to where yeah. like the road is blocked that's the off type and vibe. shit. Like, like you, dude. Uh, yes. Oh yeah. my god! But then I think that's how they did it. I'm pretty sure because it was like stage one. They changed yeah. the roads each day, so mm -hmm. they would go one road one day, the next day a different road, the next day a different road. So it was kind of like stage, but I could see how you're saying if like you would spread them out a little bit because yeah. you could go like drift week now's doing just left deals gap. Like they could do that and then travel up into like Bristol area, hit 421 mountain. That would be sick. Yeah. And then I like, go from there up into like where they were up into West Virginia. Like that's not that. What is that? You're maybe thinking like 12, 14 hours worth of travel time. Realistically, yeah. you do that four days, have yeah. a fun day in between somewhere. Go to like the Smoky Mountains or something like that's That Maybe would the be tail sick. Of the it's a, yeah. The Tale of the Dragon deals gap. Like, there's cool places out there. Mountain City, Tennessee. Like, that's... Uh, if that's not on the list for them, it is now. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, oh, shit. that's my home road. Like, hey, write that down for next year. <laughs> yeah. Like, if I see y'all going there, I know why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. yeah, that would be so cool. It would be. Because, like, I think some, since there isn't a much ability for spectation... I think something like that would work out well to do like almost a fantasy factory type TV show. You yeah, know what I mean? You could involve somebody. Like, yeah. That's, that would be the only possible way to involve everyone else into events like that. Yes. So like imagine you had, that's why I re resembled it to like a drift week because yeah. you would have a designated group of people showing up to each one of these places and you get to follow along oh dude that would be so yeah. cool what yeah or like a, you you wrap it up into like a tv show or something like exactly you make it like a game like a game show like you wrap it up somehow and like like take like the cosmic drift thing you take this appalachian mountain and you add a look like some special effects to it and like some production and put some lights and like just some added flair and yeah. then put like a put like some cameras in special places and like capture that like absolutely because there's other avenues that, like, if you're not going to... Spectator's obviously a way of revenue. So yeah. if, like, you're not going to use that way of revenue, there's obviously something else you could do. It's just making that other step. And if it's cool or not, it might just be, Todd, you're stupid, shut up. Yeah. 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 But, I, I mean, every idea is an idea until it's a dumb idea. Dude, I don't know. It, <laughs> put it in the... Con I, I'm standing behind mine, bro. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, that like, sounds awesome. I would watch the fuck out of that. Yeah, if you get a bunch of dudes together and just like just documentary and, yeah. style TV show, fucking Netflix, hit them up, bro. Yeah, I or mean like, YouTube originals. Let's run some shit. That dude. Have you ever seen Roadkill? Like with uh, I've seen a, an episode or two yeah, of it. Like that style, like. Motor Trend captures those things. Like, there's guys out there that would probably be interested in this stuff. Street Outlaws. Yes. I'm like, it's Why there. isn't that a thing for drifting? Why yeah. wouldn't that be a thing for drifting? It, no personality. Drift Indy. Actually, I'm going to DM you. What are you going to do? What, <laughs> you need more people with personalities. The sport yeah. needs more people with personalities. Realistically. Like, because you think about NASCAR. But I think there's plenty of people in the sport. You're already... It's invite only already. But if you put a TV camera in front of somebody make a tv show out of it who else going to be able to entertain that camera a lot of the bigger name drivers that yeah. are already in front seven of, of them time. but that's like i think that's a lot of drivers that are looking to make a living in the sport they already have that general understanding of i've got to get over myself i'm gonna have to be on camera sometimes yeah yeah and you gotta so, be willing to do that 
Yeah. Yeah. And so that would I, be fun. I don't think that would be really that big of an issue. It wouldn't. And if you get plus, the right people. Like, you, sco- you source out the right people. Look look at the podcast. I mean, you, I'm sure you've seen the nerves in the first five minutes of some people, and then it's like, oh, shit, I forgot that we were even recording. Yeah, it's like, you're, well, yeah, like we were just talking. We're going to have an hour and a half into it, and I feel like we've been here sitting here talking for 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like nothing to it. Once you, once you just start doing it, you're like, wow, that's easy. Damn. Yeah. Ain't nothing to it but to do it, baby. That's another I one of my things. something sayings. like that would work in drifting. Yeah. I think it would. It needs the entertainment aspect added to it. That spice. Yeah. That, like, TV production step. Yeah. Like, network level step that somebody comes in. Like, the what was the show that um, Fielding Shredder did? Hyperdrive. Hyperdrive. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I hated that show. I didn't honestly. watch a single episode. I tried watching the first I didn't watch a damn thing. I, I got I, until the point where I saw Fielding Shredder go once and... I, like I saw him that. like I saw him like completely destroy his car when he slid it over some rails, and I'm like, uh, uh-uh, I'm yeah. out. I'm like, eh, I ain't got any interest no. in this. So, have you ever heard the story behind that? All of that? Uh, uh-uh. uh. Oh, dude, L- uh, the Lone Star has a video with Shredder literally explaining the whole ordeal of what happened going into hyperdrive. Dude, this dude didn't know anything. Oh, literally nothing going into hyperdrive until the moment they started. The competition. What? So he went in blind. Blind as fuck, dude. He probably like I got the I... call on where to be like the week of and showed up. Has that all they would basically say is that it's like some obstacle courses for cars. Like no information. None. That's what and I see one of the obstacle courses was like this man's wheels left the ground and he rode on the subframes across two rails. I'm like <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> they all showed up, didn't have a fucking clue. What Destroyed was his car. And yeah. then they're like, all right, appreciate you. I'm like, this man just like wild. Wrecked bro. his car. And y'all are like, thanks. <laughs> thanks for the content. Bye. Yeah. See you later, dude. Oh yeah. All right. Well, I guess did you want to bring anything else up from yourself, your program, or anything? That you want to mention to the people. I want to mention to the people. Oh, there's probably a lot of people that don't know this. Um, I have a coffee. That was a shitty pitch, Todd. <laughs> I trying, have a coffee. I'm trying to figure out how to pitch All it. All right, take two. Yeah, <laughs> cut. Um, so yeah, go to localpatriotcoffee.com. Um, once you get to their homepage, scroll down. You'll see Life Without Breaks. That's my coffee. I collaborated with a uh, local Patriot Roasting Company. And she kind of was like, hey, Todd, this is, she came to me with the idea of life without breaks because she saw the way I live my life. Mm -hmm. The way I live my life is just go, go, go. Like you said earlier with your head, your head's go, go, go. I'm kind of like the go, 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 go kind of guy. Like always happy, always going, always doing something. I'm always staying busy. Like a busy, like my idle time kills the mind. That's what I say. Idle time kills the mind. So she's like, she saw that. She's like, well, life without breaks. I'm like, that's perfect. She like saw for me. And then she saw if go check out the bag. It is literally identical to me as a person. The skull on the front. Like I have a thing with skulls. Yeah, I got tattoos of skulls kind of stuff like that. So like it's a cool. It's got a helmet on the top of it. And it's got the four car. Not the four car. It's got the number four on the helmet from uh, my family's NASCAR team. So that like I tied in little bitty things throughout my entire life to this coffee bag that you can kind of see. So it's nice. like, yeah, she, she did her and her graphic designer did so well with the bag. And like, it is just such a representation of me, a black bag. Like the guy's got a helmet on. It's a skull face. There's smoke coming out of a mouth. He's got, there's a, like a Mohawk horns on top Hell of it. Yeah. I used to have a Mohawk back in the day when I was like 14 years old. So yeah, like it was, she made the entire bag off of what she saw from me as like, just a, like a person. So that's Go really check dope. that out. Grab a bag of that. It is like, it's literally the best coffee I've ever had. Like, I'm an oh, yeah. avid coffee drinker. Like, I love to sit down oh, and have a cup of coffee and talk. I like, drink Deathwish. Yeah. Like, you ever heard of that? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, the I strongest coffee. Death yeah. Wish. Absolutely. Um, my Nicaraguan coffee mm-hmm. is uh, so the more you roast a coffee bean, the more caffeine you take out of it. Mm-hmm. So, your darker yep. coffee isn't as, isn't necessarily stronger. There's a lighter coffee that's stronger because you're not roasting the caffeine out of the bean. So my coffee's roasted less 
at 420 degrees. Okay. Yeah. You that's, get the reference? That's a good number. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was like, she was like, we're going to we're going to raise uh, roast yours like 425 degrees. And I'm like, how about 420? Yeah. Can we drop it five degrees? <laughs> yeah. How about five degrees? That, like, work? I, I want to amp this shit up some. <laughs> <laughs> so she was like, yeah, we can do that. And I have videos like all on my, on my TikTok and like Instagram and I went there and I made the coffee. Like I roasted the coffee. I bagged the coffee. Like I did That's each, cool. every, yeah, we like, I made coffee for customers. I hung out in the coffee shop all day. Like they're, yeah. The fuck? Yeah. Like I went there like, it's, we did a lot of cool stuff together. Yeah. Like, and had a really good time together. Like I, before I came huh. here, uh, she, she put on for veteran hunters, veteran active duty police officers, all that. They held a raffle style hunting event in um, Concord, North Carolina. So if you're like an active duty veteran, or if you're active duty, if you're a veteran, firefighter, police officer, something like that, you can enter into the raffle and then they would uh, just randomly pick and then they pay for your trip to oh, wow. come hunt for the weekend. Yeah. So yeah, before yeah. I came here, I went up there and hung out with all the veterans and we hung around a fire and like they drank their beer. I drank my coffee. And then we just, we just, we shot the shit and then like, we talked as veterans and we've been able, Kate and I have been able to do so much cool stuff together outside nice. of the motorsports community. So she's, anytime I can coexist into my folks life, like the barbershop, I go to the barbershop sometimes and like we had, we had a day up there where I kind of was promoting myself, selling some coffee, getting some haircuts and like trying to help out with the motor. I yeah. hung out and like I sweep the floors. I push the hair into the vacuum cleaners. If I can coexist and help you all because you all are helping me, I am going to do it. Right. Absolutely. Like I'm, I'm a genuine dude. Like yeah. I enjoy making people happy. Like that's, that's good. People help good people. Exactly. Good people will always help good people. Surround yourself by good people. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. That's a good one. I've seen there's, I'm about quotes, dude. I love quotes. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's... If you whip a quote out of out of your pocket and you're having a conversation with people, yeah. like people are like, damn, that guy, that guy knows some shit. You show me who your I friends should... are, I'll show you your future. Facts, bro. That shit's deep. I love dude. I'm about quotes. Damn. That's it, they're so cheesy sometimes, but like so I'm fucking about it. It's dude. relatable, bro. You, you lay that shit out there, bro. People are like, damn, you're right. Yeah. Shit. Like some people refer to Bible verses to me, it's, I, it's yeah. too generic. Can't never could do shit. Yeah, that's that's one of my sayings. Like it, people, I mean, I can't do that. Yeah, like, yeah, I know you can't say that. I just can't, can't never could do shit. Yeah. Uh, ain't nothing I to want it but to do more it. Specific. Yeah. What are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, ain't nothing to it but to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, uh, I guess let's get your best piece of advice for anyone just getting in and drifting. Best piece of advice. Um. Let's see here. The last time I, it was do it within your budget. Um, I'll touch on that slightly uh, because I still, that's still like, if you want to do it and enjoy doing it, do it within your budget. Like kind of figure out where you're at budget wise and see where you'll be happy. Don't mm -hmm. go out and put yourself into like neck deep debt, neck deep debt, <laughs> trying to go drifting because then you're just going to like, you're going to have the stressors of like affording it and not, not enjoying it. Yeah. So do it within your means and you're going to enjoy it a lot more. I promise you. And Oh, also this is, this is another huge thing I heard Luke Fink say, and he's big on that. Um, uh, don't make your family the excuse not to go drifting. I, I can't stand to hear that. Like, I, I know he said it, but I'm going to say it too, because it yeah. means a lot to me because I have daughters and like, I enjoy when they come and like, Having them at the racetrack to me is take your family. Like yeah. if, if you got to get if you got to get a little RV or like a van like I got or just stay local. Don't let your like let your family live out your experiences with you. Mm -hmm. Do not leave them at home, bro. Bring them with them. Bring them with you. Yeah. Like they'll have fun. I prom I grew up at racetracks. That's racetracks and like drag strips playing underneath the bleachers. I used to like run down the side of the racetrack at the drag strips trying to beat the drag cars from one square to another. Like I, that, I cut my <laughs> teeth on racetracks. Oh, another one. <laughs> gotta tell this bro. Like, so I got a, I got somewhat of a NASCAR background. I'm like a NASCAR junkie. Yeah. So my dad's a stunt driver. Okay. And he did a Kodak shoot, Kodak camera shoot, Kodak sponsored our race car back Kodak in the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> 
So he would do all the all the driving for the commercials. Well, we didn't have show cars. We had race cars. So like with a NASCAR cup car, you got you have to heat the oil, heat the transmission, heat the rear end, heat the motor. Mm -hmm. It's a big process. And they're like, all right, we're going to shoot in about an hour. And my dad's like, well, I got to get the car ready. He's like, son, come on, we got to go. Or we're, we're going to run the car around, and then we're all going to be in turn three and four. I need you to come over there and sit next to the wall in the grass and not move. I was like, okay, cool. So we and my brother, like I'm probably seven, eight years old, right? Yeah. He's like, hop in. And a NASCAR cup car has one seat and a jungle gym of a roll bar. So we pile in the side window of this thing, my brother and I. We're tiny. We're, we're going around Charlotte Motor Speedway probably running 140 miles an hour. And my brother and I hanging on to the damn roll cage of this cup car. My dad just sitting over there grinning. Pretzled up in yeah. between the roll bar and yeah. shit. Boy, we pulled in there and that production lady, she was so hot. She's like, what are you doing? He's like, ah. He's like, it got away from me. I, you know, I got to get a little heat in the motor. And like, what are you? And I'm like, well, we, it's a race car. I kind of got to heat everything up. You said we're going to go film. But she, this lady goes, we're going to be going like 12 miles an hour. <laughs> Ah, uh, and he's like, "Why well, didn't know he was out there cutting qualifying laps?" <laughs> <laughs> when I'm sitting over here, I'm like, "I am a child." Oh, uh, do it for Dale, bro. Yeah. Do it for Dale, baby. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Speaking Fuck of Dale, yeah. local patriot has a Dale Earnhardt or uh, shit, I can't fuck this up. Local Patriot Roasting Company has an Earnhardt coffee. Kerry Earnhardt has a coffee with Local Patriot. Daniel Hemrick, cool. the NASCAR driver, has a coffee with Local Patriot. So Local Patriot is a big deal. Local Patriot's wow. in a lot of places, like NASCAR. Yeah, yeah. Like they have Earnhardt tied to their name. They're doing a lot of cool That's stuff dope. coming up. Yeah. So I can't. I can't stress enough, like, giving thanks to my folks. I got to shout out Joe on the way here. I had <laughs> back to the van. Yeah. Well, you might be able to vet this into the van. <laughs> my, Joe's like, he's he's the power stroke guru. Granted, my car, my van is a gasoline van. Mm. On the way here, after climbing the mountain and everything like that, this thing wouldn't go into overdrive. So I was on, yep. I was on whatever, uh, 40 coming here, and I was in fourth gear at 3,000 RPM going 60 miles an hour, and I'm like, oh, my God. I'm, I'm making it to this podcast. So I, I rang up my buddy Joe, started asking him questions. He called a guy. He came back to me. So, like, he – I got to give a shout-out to him for, like, helping me get through that, what was going to be a huge anxious yeah. moment for me. I am, Dude. like, 14 hours from home. Yeah. So, Joe, thank you. I appreciate that. Like, he, he got my solution resolved with me being 800 miles away from Dude, home. yeah. So – yeah, it, it it like going back to put yeah, I mean, good put. people in your corner. Yeah, work yeah. with good people. Don't work with bad people. Like you can spot out a cancerous person. Like don't don't we don't we don't like that around here. Yep. Yeah. Cheers to that. Yeah. Facts. Hell yeah. All right. Well, is there anyone else you want to shout out or plug yourself? Anything <sighs> like that? Shout out to my family. Realistically. Like, I feel like me being here, like, I've talked about myself enough. Um, I want to thank my family because um, they're so supportive. Yeah. Like, that's good. I've I've always been kind of the the different, like, not different in a way of, like, I've just been the oddball in the family that's always taking those risks. The black not, sheep. Yeah. If you want to call it the black sheep. I used to re relate, refer to myself as the black sheep in the family. And... I'm not really a black sheep. I used to be. Used mm -hmm. to be a black sheep. <laughs> not anymore. They're, they're kind of proud of me. <laughs> so yeah, like shout out to my family, my girlfriend Brittany, um, my daughter's Lava, Peyton. Thank you all. I know y'all sometimes like, when are we going to leave the racetrack? Nah. We're not leaving anytime soon. So <laughs> go have fun throwing Get used rocks to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but thank you all. My dad is a big um, contributor. I always, always call him and that helped like <laughs> SOS. And he, he usually, if he doesn't have a solution, he'll sit there and talk to me yeah. and like, we'll, we'll figure something out. So that's awesome. Mom. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate <laughs> you putting me here. I know I've been <laughs> all them gray hairs, you know, come from me, but I appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thank you. Quit stressing her out. Damn right. <laughs> right. I'm 32 and I'm still stressing her every damn day. 
Uh, she brought me my first steering wheel, though. Shout out to her. Hey. First Sparco steering wheel. I still have it in the car. Nice. Uh, yeah. So Hell, take I have, that shit out and mount it on the wall at this point. You got, you got cut this out. That's what I'm going to do. Um, so, like, she brought it to me 2014 when I was in the Navy for my Miata. Yeah. I'm going to take it, like, take it off. I'm going to get a new steering wheel and give that to her as a gift. Like, just a, nice. a just write something up for her. Like, actually, you can keep this in if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. She can find out about it. But yeah, I'm going to, I want her, I want her to have it because without that steering wheel, like, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Yeah. Like, she bought me the key to where I'm at. Yeah. And that steering wheel is worn. So cool. A leather steering wheel. Like, it's worn down the top of it. Like, it's, it's flown through my hands so yeah. many times. So I'm going to take that steering wheel off. I'm going to write her, like, the storyline of the steering wheel. Frame it. Put in a nice shadow box. And that's going to be a gift from me to my mom. So. Yeah. She'll love that dude, she's, dude, she's going to, she's going to, like, melt down in my pocket, bro. She's Don't a big, a ball, heart attack she's a big ball of emotions. <laughs> she's. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's been fun. I appreciate you having me on here. For oh, real. No problem. Like, you reach back out to me. And that, that, that shows uh, great humility. Like, you're a good person. You mean well. Thank you. So. Like you knew, you knew we had some loose ends tied up, and I did too. And here we are again. And I, I greatly appreciate this opportunity because, like, you obviously you're 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 you've accelerated quickly and at a respectable Thank rate, you. and like have handled it very well. And you're very dedicated. And a lot of people see that. And a lot of people appreciate that. You can, you can tell by the people that have been sitting right yeah. here, like the people that have been sitting right here this year. Like it's proofs in the pudding. Say that again. Like. <laughs> you're doing it and like i'm stoked for you thank you absolutely and i appreciate, I really appreciate you having it. me on and it's been one hell of a time hell yeah, yeah. Well, we'll do it again eventually absolutely yeah for sure yeah. maybe next time we'll add a, add somebody else we'll yeah. just start we'll start we'll start grilling no nah, let's do it at driven luck circuit say less and we'll bro. do it with koi and Kate. say and, less and, yeah that'd be say, cool dude that'd be so sick Oh, yeah. I'm about it. Drop it in the comments if you want. To, if you guys want to see it, my camera shut off. Whoops. Oh well. <laughs> well we're closing <laughs> it out anyway. So, uh, but that is pretty much it for this one, guys. Uh, of course, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so that you are always updated with every single episode. Uh, and of course, if you do want to be on the podcast, I don't care how big or small you are. Shoot me an email at thecircledrift at gmail.com. Just make sure to put the subject as drift resume so I can keep it organized, please. Thank you. But that is it. So we will see you every single Sunday for a new episode. Thanks. Peace. See y'all. Hell yeah. Yay, yay. Staying way up, up, up to the ceiling. Trust no bitch, can't catch no feelings. I've been taking long flights from the bay to Ibiza. Hit home runs, I'm a ball like Jita. I just want fuck, 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 then I leave her. I'm a young pop star, call the boy Justin Bieber. Got a little money if you want, I can teach her. Whole life a movie, you can watch.